pull it. Yeah. All right. All right. Party people in the place to be. We are back with a brand new, very, very exciting episode of the Pink Buzz. We have rock star extraordinaire and comic book creator <laughs> of the century um, on tonight with us. We're going to go ahead and let him introduce himself a little bit. Um, how are you doing tonight, sir? Uh, no over promising on those two. Uh, it, it, <laughs> uh, I'm doing well. Thank you. And thank you for that. Uh, uh, the the graphics on uh, that intro, I've, I it really puts into perspective how everything I do is very half-assed. I've been doing a uh, I've been doing podcasts for years, and I can't even figure out video. So <laughs> yeah, wow, we're we're, we're we're maybe just a just a little step above then because <laughs> yeah. we do things pretty half-assed some of the a good chunk of the time as well. So yeah. I mean, at, at least at least you fellas have headphones. You know, it's like, <laughs> it's like, it's like you're killing it right now. Yeah, well, uh, well, actually, Johnny upgraded his mic, and I need to upgrade to a decent mic, and then, uh, then I think we'll be pretty, pretty good. I mean, Joe actually broadcasts from his phone. Can you believe that? He has probably the greatest phone in the the history of phones because everybody I know can't believe it because of the quality of his video and audio at the same time, like. You know, I, I fell down a hole when I was in one of those rare moments where I had a little bit of money and I was thinking I should upgrade my entire life, you know, my, my setup <laughs> in all ways. And I fell down a, a YouTube hole trying to learn, uh, you know, how to best broadcast. And everybody's using DSLRs and all that. But then uh, I ran into a fellow that's a – he's a – iPhone purist. He, he broadcasts everything from an iPhone, believes in it strongly, thinks it's all in the lighting. Here's all I know is I think I've approached that age where learning new skills is impossible and uh, I have to go on local reddits to hire 22 year, <laughs> 22 year olds to, to set up a computer for me. So uh, learning a new skill like like uh, videography is probably outside of my range at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I... I... I kind of studied in graphic design and stuff when I was in school. So I'd been away from it for a while. And when I, it, you know, it's like, it's like riding a bike, you know, when you first get on, you're a little wobbly, but it comes back pretty quick. So also, man, how yeah. talented you have to be, leave a little talent for other people, Patrick, come on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what's funny, uh, not to be, uh, uh, you know, self-deprecating with intent, not to be, not to be that sort of fellow, but, uh, I, I often, reflect on how not talented I am uh, at, at music. It's kind of galling how uh, not talented I am. And it, it never mattered to me because it was always, uh, you, you know, I always put it in the framework of, of punk music and, it, and you know, it's just a self-starting, it's a self-starting endeavor rather than a talent one, right? So, so, so it's really, uh, are you willing? And yeah. And I've been willing, and so, I, but now, uh, as somebody that's done it for a long time, I I listen to people with actual, you know, gifted voices that then work hard on their voice and everything, and I just feel so humbled. But it took it took a lot of years before I reached this point. So for anybody that's thinking about getting into music with no talent, you you won't face the crushing realization that you've wasted everybody's time for like twenty years. So feel, <laughs> feel, so feel, feel feel free to you know don't let me talk you out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think you, you got quite a bit of hustle, man. You you get out there, you tour extensively, like uh, in the last year. I mean, this will be the second time you come to Montreal in less than a year. So, I mean, you know, you're, you're out there beating the pavement. I mean, it's not like you're sitting back and just, uh, you know, you're out there working. You're doing, uh, working on a band. You write comics, uh, two podcasts. Don't forget that. I mean... And we've heard the criticisms from, I believe, Tom about uh, how prepared you are for for your <laughs> podcast on Axe to Grind. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I've, I've also got a day job. I just don't talk about it very much. Um, <laughs> the the uh, uh, yeah, I I, uh, I stay busy, uh, but frankly, I still find an hour and a half, two hours a day to watch YouTube. So I I definitely mm. am not I'm not busy in the way that 
uh, you know, powerful executives are busy. I'm not busy in the way that I've got a friend who's uh, just, he sleeps four hours a night and the rest of the time he's working. And, and, yeah. and that is, uh, that's very far from me. <laughs> you know, I, I feel like a profoundly lazy person. I'm trying to get all the achievements in sniper elite four. That is yeah. not the, it's not the behavior of somebody that's, uh, you know, a, a dynamo of, uh, of energy and, uh, putting yeah. things toward the, their work, you know, that's true. Cause you bought yourself a PS five recently. So I did. That's true. It, it, yeah. uh, it, it was, uh, ostensibly for, uh, my stepson, but, uh, I definitely use it more than he, more than he does. <laughs> yeah. <too>. yeah. <laughs> You've been monopolizing yeah, the game yeah. time. <laughs> well, I mean, when you're gone on tour, he must get, uh, be able to make up for all the time, uh, uh, yeah, that you're not around, so he he can really put the hours in when. Yeah, that's when true. You, actually, when you're gone for those little periods of time, yeah. So, man, uh, busy man, and uh, well, we have you here. We'd like to talk about uh, yeah, you're writing for comics, and you have uh, quite a few. What is it? You got three titles slated to come out uh, this in the coming month. Mm -hmm. uh, one is Stringer. Uh, the other is uh, Lead Gasoline. Uh, mm -hmm. I think. You did a short story in the image 30th anniversary. I think that just wrapped up. I think the final issue just dropped. And you also have Don't Avert Your Eyes, a follow-up of short stories from the great, wonderful. I love the the, the book is uh, There's Nothing There. Uh, oh. That was, I think, one of the first books I read of yours. And, man, I became a fan instantly after reading that. So uh, Thank you very much. That, that one... Yeah. Uh... It's funny that it should have a second life now because uh, when it came out, it it was kind of. I had a it, Maria and I had a very specific audience in mind, and uh, I don't know if we reached it at all initially, but it's one of those ones where when people trip over it at the, uh, the they trip over the trade at the comic store or whatever, it it does it has found its market seemingly, and. Uh, uh, I'll be honest, that did not initially uh, include you. It wasn't targeted at you, I don't think. It was targeted at like uh, uh, Anne Rice readers uh, from the 1990s. You know what I mean? But, but happy to have you. And, yeah. And well, my wife, my, my wife really liked it too. So, oh, good. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. It, it, I think it uh, reached quite a few people, probably much wider range of audience than maybe, like you said, you guys were maybe expecting. That's cool. Yeah. Um, so Johnny, man, uh, what was it you're saying? Uh, is there going to be a, an actual follow-up to this afterwards? Because Johnny was saying, like, at the end, there is, there's there's going to be a continuation, a, a bigger story. Is that uh, still in the works? What's going on with that? Still in the works. It's uh, It's very fun to write. Now, I I was asked uh, before, prior to the writer strike everybody don't don't try to jam me up prior to the writer, <laughs> prior to the writer strike I was uh, I was asked to uh, uh, just give a shot at a script and uh, I I totally biffed it they 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 didn't love it but uh, it it uh, it reminded me of how fun that story is and the reason it's fun for me is the reason that it doesn't work maybe as a movie, or at least my script didn't, which is uh, nobody really dies. You know what I mean? There's there's maybe two characters that die, and the, well, there's the main, uh, spoilers everybody, there, there's characters that die, but, there, but there's not a body count throughout the book. No. So by Hollywood standards, uh, it's not even a horror book. You, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, and I guess that's uh, somewhat true, even by my standards, it's uh, it's got kind of got a clubhouse vibe. I would almost honestly, if I could, if I could attempt to remarket this book, I would try to aim it at like uh, uh, people who like long form, uh, or long form animes. You know what I mean? Like long running animes. The reason is that is it's got a very clubhouse vibe where characters find themselves in the same location, having a conversation about a thing that just happened. And if that sounds boring to you then it might not be the book for you, but it, but it also, it, it, I might not be describing it well. It's just, there's a no, lot of, I mean, I think the beauty in it is the characters themselves, Yeah, the way you write it's... them and the way they interact. And I mean, there's just so much in that book that when, 
like when the mother's introduced, like the relationship with her and her daughter. I, I, I just, I love that part. It's just so, I think a million people can relate to that, you know, like, yeah. You know, Joe, uh, this this is uh, currently the best interview I've ever given. I, I'm, gra- I'm 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 grateful for you because uh, <laughs> that is uh, that book is uh, you know when it came out, we were just happy to get our name on something that we were proud of, right? But then as time passes, you kind of think, oh damn, that one was really overlooked. And, and uh, I, I guess I don't get bitter about anything, but I definitely have had moments where I've where I've thought. Oh, that's that's unfortunate that we couldn't get the eyes on that. Now, it, it got. I, I am grateful that it got. Um, it got eyes on Maria for sure. You know what mm-hmm. I mean. Uh, yeah. Her work was immediately, um, kind of like uh, people got excited, and I was excited for that because uh, I'm not. You know, I'm not the steward of anybody's career. Maria would have a beautiful career with or without me, but uh, it's it's always nice when when you're really drawn to an artist and then the world, the world catches up to that in whatever way, you know? Yeah. We love her work. So I I think I, you know, this is a, hold on. I'm going to try something right now. Let me know if it's too intense. Oh, Oh oh, no, no, that didn't work. Hold on. Oh, (laughs) hold on. Uh, Oh, that didn't work either. Hold on. Uh, 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 (laughs) There you go. You're trying to, (laughs) Yeah, I can I can do smash cuts if we want. Oh no! Uh, oh shit! <laughs> uh, I, just, I just wanted to get. You know, it's tough when you're getting older. You don't know how close to put a camera to your face without. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to scare anybody, but um, uh, uh, Maria, I always say, has uh, some of the best gesture in modern comics. Uh, her, her, all of her characters act. You know what I mean? And uh, that's uh, a thing that's uh, seemingly lost. On a lot of uh, a lot of younger artists at this moment, uh, which is kind of crazy because a lot of a lot of young artists are pulling from manga, which has a a, a, a lot of strong gesture. You know what I mean? A, a, and uh, you would think that they would adopt that, but a, a, a lot of artists uh, they understand pose, but they don't understand gesture. Just small, like uh, you have to exaggerate it slightly for the page, but but just yeah. small things that make you feel like two people are having a real life. Yeah, exchange. And I think Maria does that as well as anybody in the game, you know? So I, it's been wonderful to see her work with some really big writers, I think, like Azarello and, and et cetera. But yeah, her yeah solo that, that work, series is good, yeah. Yeah, yeah. oh, uh, yeah, G- good point. Her, her solo work is not to be overlooked because it's uh, uh, it, it takes that uh, expressive element and, and even puts it uh, uh, on st- in starker relief, so. Uh, porcelain is yeah, probably her best thing, in my opinion. Like, I, I love porcelain so much. Like, oh, that's interesting. Um, I'm trying to think of what I would think of as, as her best. Um, I don't know. I, I it, it, she's uh, it was funny. I, I remember uh, uh, watching a YouTube where uh, they called the art weird in that book, and, <laughs> and I thought that was. A not sufficient for review, but yeah. <laughs> but but B, uh, I thought it kind of um, it disappointed me a little bit. Now, don't get me wrong, reviews are always ever just one person's opinion. You can't really take anything to heart. Uh, I know certainly if I was to review uh, something on it, you know, if I was gassy at a particular time that I was watching a movie, I might have a different experience than, <laughs> than, than if not. But but. Uh, but I was a little disappointed uh, that anybody could look at it and think – and have their first response be weird in the negative. Weird in the positive, I would I, I would. Accept. Yeah, exactly. There's weird yeah. in a good way for sure. Like, you know, it stands out. It's different. It's unique. It's maybe a little – it could be a little off-putting, but fits the tone of the story and really brings the story – like – well, it's a better extra element. Extra realism, yeah. so it's going to be weird. I mean, like, yeah. that's kind of like a no-duh, but <laughs> – yeah, yeah I, but you can go further than that. That's kind of a little scary for your um, deduction skills, in my opinion. Yeah, uh, but you know, it's without getting on a, we're at a real uh, maybe inflection point uh, uh, w- with comic review because we, uh, it's it's unclear who's taking this uh, medium seriously. You know, yeah. it, it, it's uh, you have people. Um, who have in it on if you want to look at politics as a spectrum there's there's people on uh, both sides of the spectrum that 
uh, have kind of made the idea of comics important to them, but, uh, but the, the aesthetics of comics, I think we're, we're losing that conversation almost entirely. And uh, the, the reviews, like uh, I remember, I try not to read reviews uh, because uh, I've had the experience, I've had the experience of, of giving reviews of things and people reading me in the wrong spirit. Like I'm trying to harm them with my review. And, I, I, and that's never the case. And, uh, but when somebody's talking about your work, it's hard not to feel that way. Right. Like, uh -huh. like you, you, and I never want to feel that way. And typically I do not, but I do get a little irritated. I, I'll, I'll confess when, uh, I feel like they're, I feel like someone is willfully, uh, applying a lens to a work that doesn't, uh, doesn't ask for it. So for, for example, uh, uh, one of the reviews I got was, uh, on, on, uh, on Frontiersman was uh, good book hesit hesitant to give it a higher score because I don't know the politics of uh, uh, of the work yet and now but then he didn't read the book because well, the whole point of it is right like he's an older guy who's kind of out of the game he's secluded so he's coming back into a world where the politics he wasn't living in so he's got to adjust so he doesn't know where he stands in this new environment. And yeah, I mean, you know, imagine, so, yeah, imagine, imagine being, uh, I mean, uh, the, the inspiration for that book is obvious is, is green arrow, right? So imagine being uh, green arrow, uh, uh, imagine being green arrow, uh, 1979 versus green arrow, uh, 2023 and kind of the, uh, the, the uh, liberalism or the progressivism of 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 your father versus today, like my like, yeah. imagine you know you stand in one place and and you're going to seem conservative after a time, right? That's that's the expression. Yeah. So, uh, so but but the but the reason that it was unclear to that critic, it seemed, was that it was a, a pudgy aging white guy uh, who was was struggling to find his place uh, in, in modernity and. Uh, I guess that I guess to that critic after a single issue and look, I'm, I'm always available to the idea that I didn't do something right. You know what I mean? I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, you ne know what? I'm never, I'm <laughs> never above the idea that I, I, I'm, you know, I'm an imperfect writer. So, so, so I, I'll take blame where necessary, but it seemed that but, that critic like I, just wanted to apply a political lens, like, like a partisan political lens. Let me put it like that. It, it, yeah. it felt like a partisan political lens. And with all of my work, if there's any sort of narrative through line of any type, uh, any type, any type of, of uh, thematic through line rather is uh, I, I'd like my books to be about people who uh, are trapped, uh, trapped by other people's politics, trapped between other people's politics, who, people who just, uh, are, are what we would call, uh, you know, what you used to maybe call working people, but like what, what but that term has been politicized. I, I guess what I'm saying is, uh, uh, people with interpersonal concerns, not macro concerns, people that are dealing with things in their real life, like in the same way that every day. You know, yeah. Yeah. Every day, the, the same day, to day same. the day to day. Yeah. yeah. And, and and look, there, obviously, I'm not ignorant. There's politics to that, right? Like the, these are the. Uh, sorry, I'm going to date myself, but these this is like the Joe the Plumber concerns here. Like you know, like for anybody that remembers that uh, campaign moment from whatever year that was, <laughs> I think that was maybe the Obama uh, Obama presidency, whatever. But uh, there's uh, obviously, the, the, but to me, it's just I find it frustrating when. Cause I, I don't begrudge anybody making their own work that, that, mm -hmm. uh, it, it, that is political in whatever respect they want it to be. But, and I, I'm also open to the idea that my work is uh, implicitly political. If you are of the belief that the personal is political, right? Like if that, if that's, if that's your worldview, then my work is political. However, it is distinctly not partisan and, and, and putting partisan politics on top of my work, I fa I thought was irritating. You know, what I mean, so and I and to be honest, I received that 
uh, uh, it would be rude to open up the emails, but I, 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 uh, I received emails from people that thought the book was too right wing, which it is not. And then also from people that refused to read it because I thought it was uh, too left wing in the respect that I was bashing Trump. I don't think there's a Trump reference. Uh, in I, fact, I know there's. In I fact, I know there's not a Trump reference. <laughs> I don't remember. I don't remember. I mean, I've read it a little while ago, but I don't remember anything like that. But like, you know listen, you're you're writing about a person that exists, right? And I'm sitting right here because mm-hmm. I related so much a pudgy middle aged <laughs> white man that doesn't really agree with all the politics coming from the left and the right, right? Like, mm-hmm. I'm kind of in the middle, and I'm just like. Like it's almost like everyone's become militant on both sides, and it's it's like holy fuck! Like no one, no, there's no middle anymore. Like the middle yeah, ground has been so ev- ev- eviscerated that I mean, there's no there's no more dialogue or conversation going on, and you know. So like when I read this book, I, I related to the character a lot because I'm like I don't even want to talk about politics because I find it so stupid and ludicrous that I just. You know, I believe in certain things. I think people should treat each other well, and that's pretty much the end of it. And you know, so, you, yeah, you've marked yourself for death by saying you're a centrist. But, but the, the uh, but I, I'll I'll expand on what you're saying a little bit if you don't mind. Uh, mm-hmm. I I think by I think by any standard, any any rational standard, I I probably fall on. I probably am not a centrist. I probably fall on uh, on kind of. Uh, uh, I guess at least on the progressive scale, although there's little cutouts that uh, seemingly, uh, you know, both these quote unquote sides uh, co-opt issues as they see fit. So like, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. the, the, the idea of the idea of left from uh, 1993 is very different than the idea of left and, and because they just borrow issues as, as needed as uh, ad hoc. Uh, but Let's say that I let's say that I am uh, on uh, an extreme progressive, right? Like for the sake of argument, uh-huh. and uh, it's still incumbent upon me as a writer to to make the thing not a a pure polemic propaganda piece of trash. You know, you know what I mean? like, it's yeah, still yeah. incumbent upon me to not uh, and. You know, this this is obviously in comics for whatever reason, uh, the last 10 years or so have just been chaotic in this respect with people digging into trenches on, on these matters. And really, uh, again, I, I have I have no fear of politics per se, um, but I don't as I always say, I don't find them in comics. I, I find sloganeering in comics. I find uh, platitudes in comics. Uh, I don't find any politics because politics require policy and there is there is no suggestion of policy in comics i i I read still very many comics and and i can tell you that there is there is no there's no solution posited right There, there, there and uh for people you know over a certain age and honestly i think that's probably most comic book readers most western comic book readers are and we can bemoan this fact if we want but i think that they're over a certain age at this point uh you, you would if you don't apply practical ab- application to those slogans then it you by definition it's not politics you, you, you know so so uh this is another point of contention that i have and it's a it's a drum i'm always banging so we can definitely go in a different direction but like i don't even think we have at this juncture, the right to, in comics to judge each other's politics simply because I don't see any on display. You know, you know what I mean? I, I, I just see kind of flag waving and, uh, with, with with zero follow through, right? Um, so anyway, that, that this is all to say that if, if anybody in the viewership is, is, uh, is uh, uh, you know, wondering where on that hot button issue I fall, it, it is uh, that... I would be very available to reading, uh, for example, Mike Barron. Mike Barron's written some pure trash in his life. He's also a very fun, very fun action adventure uh, comic book writer. Uh, and to my knowledge, uh, by any stretch, or, or 
I, I'm a right wing is uh, such a loaded term. It like essentially uh, is a slur for uh, like for the left wing to call somebody right wing. It's it's essentially to 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 uh, brand them in some way. And and I don't wish to do that to a guy who I don't know personally. But he, regardless, to say he is conservative in in some respects, right? And he is uh, uh, not shy to say that. So let's say that I have maybe nothing in political common with, with Mike Barron. I still would read anything Mike Barron put out. You, you know what I mean? And I would also yeah. be happy to absorb his politics provided there's some politics there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Provided that there's something for me to, as an adult, not as a, you know, as a kid, as a kid, Spider-Man, uh, you know, uh, kicking a skinhead on a college campus, it, it, that's, that could reson be, be resonant in some way because you know that you know that Nazism is wrong. So, so Spider-Man kicking, and, and it makes sense. But as an adult, I, I would. My question would be: Oh, he kicked him in the head. Uh, now what? Uh, it, it, you know, is uh, it, are we? Is, is Spider-Man in essence are all superheroes? In essence, kicking the can down the road. You know what I mean? And, and I, 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 these are questions that I think people should ask. Like. Uh, you know, not to make comics unfun in whatever way, but it, it's uh, if you're going to hit me with with slogans, then hit me with your platform. And if you're going to hit me with your platform, I'd love to hear some policy. And if for, and for anybody that doesn't think that's possible in comics, you are incorrect. <laughs> it is a very flexible medium. You could do a lot of amazing things here. Uh, it doesn't have to look like the. Uh, uh, the, the council scene from uh, the, the prequels where it's, where it's just a bunch of people talking. It could be, you know, you could, you could demonstrate what you mean. Uh, it's a visual medium. Uh, <clears throat> so sorry for filibustering, but uh, <laughs> I, it's fine. The, 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 I just remember that, that uh, the emails that I got afterwards, and it was very disappointing for Marco uh, who did frontiers when frontiersman with me. Yeah, he, because he did great work he, on that. Yeah. Great work. Brilliant artist. He is a, uh, He's an Italian who is, uh, uh, you know, of course, he has his own views on life and, and the politics of Italy and et cetera. But uh, to be sort of slammed with with this barrage of strange emails that was people saying, you know, this work is too right. This work is too left. Uh, uh, and for him, it was utterly confusing, you know, like because uh, he, he he's not. He doesn't think and, of those terms, you know what I mean? He's not an American. Yeah, and, and, exactly. and, and, and also, like, you know, you, you think about what you'd absorb from from news. Like, uh, for a young person to be called left-wing is is probably, in most circles, no problem. Uh, for, uh, for a young person to be called right-wing in those same circles is a real problem. So, like, imagine imagine now uh, Marco, who's, who's a younger man than me, reading these emails, people are like, Oh, I love the book. And then the next one is, uh, you know, your attack on Trump was, was unfounded and I'll never read this. And then the next, and, and obviously you got to be confused cause you don't remember talking about Trump. And then the, the, <laughs> the next one, and then the next one is, uh, you know, your choice to center, to center the uh, story of, of, uh, uh, of an older white male speaks volumes about your politics. And, and just imagine like, and for, yeah. But why? What you? There's different people that live in the world. You you can't oh, tell a listen. story from whatever. Like yeah. I mean, what you? Yeah, do, I, don't I don't know. Even, I just don't. Do, I don't get I, it. I don't, don't I would open urge, the door. Yeah, don't open the door. Yeah, yeah. No, I I would urge you not to. I would urge you not to try to understand crazy. It's it's very. Yeah, it, yeah. It, yeah. I don't. I like. I don't watch. I don't listen to the news. I don't. Yeah. I get my news through my wife. So. <laughs> I don't watch the news. I just she tells me. Oh, did you hear this? Nope. No, nope, yeah, I didn't. Well, I don't. I don't watch the news. I mean, I, I watch so. a little too much. So yeah, like, I'm, I'm a little twitchy, but like I, I, I get what I get. What you're coming from. I mean, I cook with the uh, an electric stove. That tells you about all you need to know about me. But yeah. <laughs> well, well, so, so Johnny, that that's the irony here, right? Is that uh, for me to be hit with uh, some of these emails claiming I'm right wing when it's like, I don't know, I've been vegan for 25 years. I'm uh, mm. essentially an open borders guy. Uh, I, I like my politics, my actual active engagement with politics is on the extreme left wing. <laughs> so now, or 
actually, let me rephrase. These words are so delicate now. On the extreme end of progressivism. Uh, uh -huh. it, it, so for well, me to be- Well, let's just say it like this. Like if Andrew Tate or somebody was to come after you, you would be called nothing but like a, a liberal fascist, a liberal um, Nazi, um, all, all the type of um, cuck, you know, all the terms that they would use. Sure. Would be seen as like a left-wing soy boy, all those oh, yeah. terms. You know what I mean? Like- <laughs> If that if that lens was put on you from that side, that's how you would be viewed, one hundred percent. Oh yes. So yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, well, th th this is, I guess, the, you, you're touching on the core of of what I meant by all that by bringing this up, and I apologize, everybody, is uh, <clears throat> the hit, being hit with lenses that don't actually uh, mean anything to a, 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 a multifaceted, I I hope, uh, uh, at at self actualized adult. Um, is frustrating when you're talking about art, you know, when you're talking about something that, that, uh, that, that you worked hard on to express yourself, not to express a slogan, not to express, uh, to express, uh, uh, I'm not attempting to teach anyone a simple, dumb lesson of any type. I, I, I'm just exploring thoughts in my own head and to, to be hit with, uh, as you said, if, if, if on one side you get called a cuck and on the other side you get called, a not so fascist yeah. or what, what, whatever it is. Um, so it, th that's all deeply frustrating. And I see we're getting, uh, questions about actual comic work, which we can get into. Yeah. I, I yeah. apologize <laughs> for veering us off. <laughs> it's perfectly fine, man. Yeah. So who would you love to work with? Well, who, who would be a dream collaboration for you? Like, uh, okay. So, the, so, so asking. I, I, uh, I'm not being diplomatic in this. I'm not being uh, political. The creators I work with right now, in my opinion, are, are uh, you know, the best is up to you. But uh, there is such a beautiful simpatico with the people that I co-create co with that th that is my answer, right? So my answer is Marco. My answer, my answer is Paul. My, 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 my and I, I, uh, uh, Al Gofa, my, my, these people that I'm creating with are, are real, real, real talents, and and, uh, and I love what they bring. But that's but okay. So that's the that's the answer that I mean in my heart, and also feel like I have to get out. But um, in terms of people I haven't worked with, you know, there's in some respects I'm I'm you know I'm I'm uh, an old not old school, but I, I uh, fellas like uh, uh, Michael Lark. You know what I mean? Like the, 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 those are fellas, the, those are fellas that, uh, Oh, Lee weeks, Lee, Lee weeks is, 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 uh, like a, a creative uh, genius to me because, uh, now this is, this is, uh, I don't think this is controversial. I, this is something that writers talk about, but may, maybe, uh, readers don't as much. <clears throat> uh, and it, it, and maybe it can seem like a, in some ways a, a backhanded compliment. Uh, though I, I don't mean it that way at all. There's uh, artists who are writers, artists, uh, and uh, some of those some of those uh, men and women are 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 a little on the boring side because they think like a writer and writers are boring. But some of them are just so locked in. Like the the perfect example of a writer's artist would be Sean Phillips. That that's that's someone who thinks like a writer. Right. And, and I don't mean to take anything away from his art. Art, His art is phenomenal, <laughs> but, but he, and, and he, and this is also a product of him working with, with uh, some of the same creators over and over again. Uh, but he is, uh, his ability to tell a story uh, is very high level as everybody knows. But part of that is that he's thinking, writers tend to think, uh, if they're any good, they, t they tend to think uh, in moment to moment storytelling. And then hopefully that, that amounts to, to, you know, your ability to tell a big story. So uh, Sean Phillips is a great example of somebody that can, that you're never going to be lost. Not one time in a, in, in a Brubaker Phillips book, are you going to be confused about the geography of the room? <laughs> you're not going to be confused about uh, who's who, you're not going to be <laughs> confused about uh, uh, the. There's nothing in the blocking. There's nothing in the in the selection of shot that that 
uh, is going to confuse anybody and you are going to tell that story with perfect clarity time and time again. And uh, some of those fellas, and, and I consider Lee Weeks in that, in that same uh, space, you know, I love those guys. I, 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 and I love the, I love the flash of, um, you know, so, some of the, I, now here's a distinction between an, a, an artist, pardon me, a writer's artist, someone, an artist who thinks like a writer. And then of course the hyphenation, the writer artist. Right. And, and, uh, uh, there's, uh, in, in that hyphenated world, we've got uh, like Daniel Warren Johnson, right? And, yeah. and uh, I, I think uh, I don't know if is Tradmore. Tradmore just wrote a book. Is that true? Uh, yeah. Did he? Uh, did uh, Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange and Marvel. Yeah. I know he's working on that. So I've only seen pages. I haven't read the thing yet. It, it looks beautiful. And the, those fellas who are uh, they're artist writers, right? So so, so, so they're artists that uh, they have to have. Um, they think in terms of flash. They think in, think in terms of, of, of visual impact. Uh, uh, those fellows are brilliant. And, and I obviously they make comics, uh, th they make comics uh, a draw. They, they, they make the, uh, in the same way that we talk about the image creators, or, you know what I mean? They make comics the thing that you pick up and you immediately, you know, for I had friends that never read a comic before in their life and, uh, but Battle Chasers, they picked up every issue and I'd say, what's it about? They'd say, I have no idea. You know what I mean? but, it, but, but it's just, it's just visually compelling. So there's something, obviously I'm taking nothing away from those, but, uh, for myself, I think that there's, uh, uh, I have a draw towards those, uh, uh, artists that think like writers. I, I think that, uh, uh, a lot of those guys for me, like, you know, I, I'm, I'm 10 years into a comic book career and I still feel like I'm learning. And I think that those guys, uh, can really carry a, a, a writer in a way uh, that uh, the the guys who who have a lot more pizzazz, I guess, or, or are going for more impact panels. Um, th those dudes, uh, without a, without a great writer, things can get a little uh, a, a little uh, you, 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 a little loose. <laughs> I'm trying to get the feeling you had that kind of relationship with your artist on um, Stringer, uh, Paul Tucker, I believe, like. That book, like like you were talking about, you, the kind of noir guys you brought up, I, I got a little bit more of an um, a European feel. Kind of, mm -hmm. I kind of got like a, a Jordy Burnett, old school Euro um, noir That's feel from cool. Springer. But like, um, I I, I, I kind of really got that you were really hitting on the same level as a Brew Baker Phillips book with that. So I kind of wanted to bring up that book a little bit. That's fans. that's. That, First, let me say that's that's really really nice. Uh, and and uh, Paul is a, a great example of an artist that uh, uh, amplifies any any idea that I have. Uh, I have to confess that when we first started working together, uh, I I felt some obligation to like to overwrite to like w walk walk Paul through ideas. Like and then I think I think this would really hit. Uh, but but now it's there's just utter confidence that anything that I, I, any place that I drop the ball and my idea is not able to be realized or, or is uh, just misguided in whatever way. And, and this is also my relationship with Marco. The, these are men who just completely understand the idea of team where if uh, in any place that I fail, they, they make it much better. <laughs> <laughs> much better so uh and uh paul uh is uh fascinating fascinating guy because we're writing uh uh kind of these are crime stories that we're doing uh, and, and we're working on a new project we, we, uh he's got two issues done and uh, uh we're working on, it, it's these are crime stories that unlike brubaker phillips who do, who do something um so specific that I feel like, I feel like to, I don't mind stepping in the shadow. I don't, I don't mind that at all. These are, these are real Titans. You know what I mean? So I, right. I have no problem with that. However, um, I wanted to, I wanted to take us just left of their shadow. So, so you know what I mean? So that perhaps we could be uh, seen a little bit. And 
uh, I think Paul threw incredibly clever uh, layouts. Uh, yes. 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 Uh, when they're walking through the hallway and like it, the page bends around like that, that was so well done. I really enjoyed like there was some really, really fun or double pages and stuff where he was lying. I love that one, too. Yeah, that was great. I love that one, too. Uh, just like where the tennis ball bounces creates all these different panels. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. some, There's some fun stuff in there layout wise, like uh, the way he laid out his panels. Really fun, creative uh, panel layouts in, throughout that book, all throughout. Yeah, yeah, that, that that's that's all. Uh, like I, I give all the credit in the world to Paul, who who mm -hmm. anything that I have as an idea, he he realizes in in just such a, you know, because it's easy as a writer to it, it, it's it's such a being a writer is a scam. Uh, <laughs> like it's just a ridiculous scam because I compare it to being an eye surgeon, right? Um, an eye surgeon is is a, a high skill position and it's necessary. Uh, however, it takes about fifteen minutes uh, to realize what what Paul has to do takes hours and hours and hours. Obviously, right? So uh, he's more of a heart surgeon, <laughs> you know, more of an open heart surgeon, um, and uh, he. For me to say things like. Uh, the tennis the 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 tennis court uh, becomes a, 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 a how do you say it? A Bosch painting a a, a, a Bosch painting uh, depicting hell or whatever and that that's easy for me to do with with little ooh, look at ooh, okay Bosch painting uh, you know <laughs> like I just type I just type it and then Paul's the one who breaks his back to make it not just uh, realized and 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 on paper but to make it work to make it clever, to make it, you know, and, and, uh, I, I don't know. I think writing is, writing is one of those funny things. It's a, it's a, it's a skill position and it's very necessary, but, uh, it, it is, uh, the, the, the labor, the division of labor is, uh, <laughs> it's highly unfair, you know? Uh, so, uh, I'm sorry. I, I'm seeing, uh, another question. Let me, let, let me see. Yes. Uh, if survival fetish was made into a movie, would you want it to be an indie or a major studio or would you want them to touch? Uh, to, okay. So uh, I have a uh, very pretentious attitude uh, towards film adaptation and I'm unapologetic in that uh, I'm not on that Alan Moore thing where I don't want my work touched, uh, touch it, do whatever you want to it. It is, it, it is, uh, if you pay me the money for an option, that, beco that becomes yours for the purposes of applying your art and your your special your expertise at that medium, good or bad, um, to to a thing. And I take it's not mine. I don't. To be honest, if something of mine was adapted, I don't even know if I'd if I'd watch it. It's it, 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 and I don't mean that in the Alan Moore way of like uh, of go to hell. I mean it in the like. I, I might not, I would only see it if I was interested. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, like, I don't even like, so it's, uh, uh, to, so to, to answer this question, I'm very open to this sort of stuff. Like I, I've got a manager when he hits me and is like, what do you want to do with this? I go, oh, whatever you think is best. Man. Cause, cause I, uh, I don't have any type of vision for, um, film for film or television. It's not my medium. I I've written scripts and they're fun. And uh, certainly that world can pay better than comics. Uh, and I've got a family. So by all means, give me that work. <laughs> <Straight> <laughs> <up>. <laughs> but, 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 but the fact is, the fact is I don't have the passion for it that I do. And I, you know, I love film. I don't love television as much, but I love film, but I don't have the same passion for it with comics. Comics, not to get, a, not to get weirdly, <laughs> I don't know if this melancholy or what this is, but uh, you know, been reading comics since I was like probably two and I couldn't read uh, to, 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 uh, to, to now and, and devoting a decade to trying to be genuinely good at it. Um, you know, if there's other things like I, I work in games, um, I'm just starting in that world, right? Like I've got a few years under my belt of, of working for video games and it's fun. Uh, it's, it's fulfilling when it comes together. Uh, and I like everybody I work with, but it is not comics. 
and and uh, television isn't comics, and and uh, uh, movies aren't comics. Comics are. Uh, to me, comics exist in a different place. It, it's just the medium that I've chosen to work in. So whatever, but, but this person is asking me an opinion. So I'll, I'll be honest and give an opinion. Okay. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, uh, what I wanted to be an indie or a major studio. Uh, so the history of, of, uh, that series is, uh, it got, I don't know what the terms are, the Hollywood terms. Cause I don't even remember if I got paid for it or not, but, uh, Basically, there's two Hawaiian stars in the world, um, like the larger film world. And, and both of them have had this thing uh, for some am amount of time. Uh, they've handed it off. <laughs> and uh, uh, it, it, it is... Uh, uh, I would have been happy with either one of them adapting it or their, their, uh, whatever you call it, their, um, their studio, their, uh, little production companies, uh, uh, adapting it. Uh, but then again, if it was, if it was done on a shoestring, uh, I mean, to be totally frank, if you'd like to hear, I like, I don't, okay. Sorry, everybody. This is going to sound political, <laughs> even though it's, even though it's not, um, I, this is an example. I saw survival fetish as a human being story that happens to take place in Hawaii. I did not see it as uh, uh, identity bound to, um, to Hawaii, so, so to speak. Uh, like, and that's no disrespect to the Hawaiians. I, I, I you know, beautiful people in a beautiful place, but uh, it, it is, it is about, um, it's about desperation and desperation could be, it was inspired by the Balkans. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, so the fact that it takes place in, in Hawaii is not, is uh, it's material, but it's, it's, it's not the, so this is all to say that um, I would personally, any of my action oriented work, I, I would just, if I had my choice and I had to see it made into film, I would just, go to the Philippines. I would go someplace where uh, it, it can be inexpensive to shoot a film. You, you can uh, work with local talent that's brilliant. You don't have to worry about a star per se because nobody in the West knows who anybody is in the Philippines, right? Like, um, or or, or uh, Indonesia, like, uh, like the raid. The raid is an achievement, right? Like the, right. the, 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 the raid is a... And, uh, you know, having talked to people in film and television, they say that that model is virtually impossible now because, uh, uh, all of the, uh, foreign rights have been essentially cartelled. Uh, it, it, you, there's, uh, kind of, uh, they're gate kept now by, by, uh, powerful studio people. So, uh, so, so that's all disappointing, but that's, that's what, how I would like to see anything is, <clears throat> is, uh, done, cheaply but but uh with local cast and high uh, kind of like the highest value that y you can stretch your dollar uh in certain places uh so sorry for that long answer but uh <laughs> but but that's if you know but again pay them pay me the money and they can turn it into a children's cartoon it's fine it's got nothing to do with me <laughs> at, the end of the, at the end of the day um yeah. but uh, I see. Uh, so what was the, sorry, fellas, uh, for hijacking the, the thing here. So what was the first comic that got you hooked as a kid? Uh, th my three favorites as a kid were, were Spider-Man, uh, Gru and Punisher. And, uh, those, and also there was a, I, I guess this would have to be around, I don't know, nine or 10. I'd, I'd have to look this up, but there was a, a, a book called Ralph Snort. Uh, it was a now comics uh, so now comics, uh, nobody remembers now comics now, but, uh, now comics dealt with licenses like Terminator before Dark mm -hmm. Horse did, I want to say. Mm -hmm. They um, had the Ghostbusters comic, right? Yeah, they did. Yeah, that's exactly right. And, uh, uh, they're not remembered for anything except for starting a couple careers. Uh, but, but the work itself never gets reprinted or whatever, but there's a, there's a comic called Ralph Snart, which when you're like, and I, and I should be clear that uh, I'm just an edgy teen in my soul, you know, like that's who I am as a person. And, and, uh, you know, it frustrates my girlfriend. It frustrates uh, people around me who I say the wrong thing and get in trouble. I, I, and I understand it, but it, there's no running from who you are and who I am is the person that 
I loved Milk and Cheese, the comic, when I was a kid, right? Because it was they just went around hitting people with the hammers, and 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 that just thrilled me. And and Ralph Snart was a book that I was picking up as a, as a literal child, and uh, from Phase Drugs in, uh, in Del Mar, New York, and uh, the, the he was a mental patient that was uh, confined to a, to an insane asylum, but would have these complex fantasies. Uh, in his head that ranged from going on dates with girls to killing people, to being a biker to, and, and uh, it was just for something that you find in a, in a phase drugs next to, you know, West coast Avengers, it was just the most transgressive thing I'd ever read in my life. Um, so uh, I, I, I loved Spider-Man, the character, obviously as a kid, it's hard not to connect with him. Uh, Punisher fed that edgy. Is this too adult for me? If people are getting their heads blown off. So, so, sort of energy that I loved. Grew. I just loved loved the craft of Grew, even as a kid, because uh, the way yeah, that Sergio Argonis, yeah, man, just so good. The way that he would successfully wind a a very so not, not complex, but sometimes multifaceted moral lesson, as though the whole thing was the the whole thing was a uh, a fable of some type. Uh, just was blew my mind. You know what I mean? Like I, I just thought it was just uh, uh, even as a kid, I thought it was a beautiful thing. And uh, and then Ralph Snart, and and Ralph Snart was just this. You know, I didn't know they could do this sort of thing. Uh, that uh, that creator. Let's see if I can Ralph. Um, so Mark Hansen, Mark Hansen still sells his books online and everything. Um, but I don't know if he's has any interest in being part of the comics conversation. And I think that's kind of interesting too, right? So here's a, here's a skilled cartoonist who did his thing, does his thing for a very long time. And he's just not trying to compete. <laughs> he's not trying to um, be that thing. And I don't know. I, I think that there's something beautiful to that too. Right. So, Oh man, I, I need, I really need to buy all this, all the Ralph Snart <laughs> stuff. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's all available on Amazon and every it's, I think it's, you can, it's not as hard to find as, uh, as you'd think if you want to buy the trades and stuff, you could probably find it uh, at a, at a decent comic shop in their back issues. They probably have a bunch of now stuff. Yeah. You can definitely find Ralph Snart in back issues, but you know, the comic shops are, are all over the place now. I, I, uh, I kind of don't know. Like when I walk into a comic shop, cause I'm about to do essentially a comic book shop tour. Uh, because I, I, uh, when I tour the country with my band, I try to stop in as many as I can. And sometimes I introduce myself. Most of the time I don't, but uh, just to try to get a feel for things. And, uh, it's hard to see what the pulse of the country is. I don't find too many back issue stores anymore. No, you know what I mean? and I, I, yeah, I, well, I, I hear all the time that that shops are just going over to back issues. I, I hear this narrative, but I don't actually go into those stores very often, or I don't find them. I, I what I find is a lot of stores are going trade first. That's for sure. Like they're going, like they're put, they're centering trade, trade paperbacks as, as their business. Right. And, and uh, I, I'm fine with that. I like to read like that. It, I, I don't know how sustainable it is in the direct market, whatever. There's conversations to be had, but, uh, but kind of like the digging through the, digging through the boxes sort of, sort of store. I, I just, I don't run into a ton of them. Hopefully I will on this next door. Oh, I found like my mom moved to Prince Edward Island in the Maritimes <laughs> And there's a great comic shop there in the basement. They have all these shelves, all the back issues. And uh, I hit up the owner. I was like, oh, man. He's like, oh, I got a bunch. He's like, you can stay down here all day if you want to go through them. And I, I must have spent three, four hours just going through all these back issues. And it's great. Like, I'll send him lists on Twitter. He's like, oh, I just got three new, like, 25 long boxes. It has, like, uh, what was the last one he said? It had some... Comico, some. Anyway, he he gave me a list of all like the old like indie publishers that were in it, and he's like, 
So I, I asked him for some Maelstrom, some other stuff. I mean, he, I put lists together and he goes through them all and he finds it for me. And uh, yeah, yeah see that? I, I love going to visit my mom. I, I stop at that comic shop every time I go visit my mom. Yeah. That, that's, a, that's one of those joys that, um, you know, I, I, I talk about how boomer and impulse this is, how, how it uh, dates me. But uh, there, there is a joy that I feel like a lot of people are missing out on in searching out something obscure because n now our access to almost nothing's obscure anymore. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you miss out on, on just a fundamental experience of record store. I found X uh, comic book store. I found X, you, you know, and um, I don't know, it, it, you know, because digital makes it so, everything is accessible at all times. And, and, uh, and, you know, look, I'm grateful. I, I just inherited an iPad and, and, uh, I'm going to make use of it on this tour. I'm going to get a lot of reading done, but, uh, and certainly I, okay. Sorry, everybody. This is a very niche, uh, complaint I have, uh, getting anything to Australia is very expensive and, and, uh, also it may not arrive. So, uh, I, I tend when I go to the United States, I tend to buy a ton of books and then try to get them back and uh, go over the weight limit at the uh, luggage. Uh, but but uh, it's funny as you get older, you enter when you enter your thirties, you want to own things. You start getting like a nicer, you get a home or you get a nicer apartment. You want to start owning things. And uh, now I'm torn between these worlds where I don't want to own anything because it's a hassle. And then I also, obviously I'm in the nesting period of my life. You know, my girlfriend and I are trying to buy a home and it, it, mm -hmm. it's a, uh, uh, so I'm, I'm torn, but uh, we'll see if this iPad spoils me. If, if I'm just, uh, if I give up on <laughs> physical media altogether. Physical media. Yeah. Well, I've, I've developed a, a kind of balance between the two. So, because I'm running out of space, like we own a home and, my wife has mentioned a few times she's like the office is is just out of control like she's like so she's she doesn't gift me any kind of comics anymore records vinyl is fine but no more comic books for me as gifts she's like no i refuse to buy you any more comics as gifts <laughs> well, well you know I, I always had this i had this thought actually the other day about the utility of the things in our home like obviously people with huge libraries of books. It's very unlikely that they're going to revisit those books in any real way. How many books have you reread in your life? In my life, I think I've reread two books maybe, you know, and, and uh, cause there's always more books to read, you know, and I have limited mm -hmm. time on this earth. Yeah. So, uh, you know, and people have comfort movies. I understand that, but, but, uh, but novels are a little different. Novels are a real time commitment. So, mm -hmm. Uh, typically I don't reread them, but people who I know don't reread them will have thousands of books in their home. Uh, I'm trying to get to the point, like for example, I guess I'll give this to local kids because there's zero chance that I read this again in my life. Uh, you know what I mean? There's nothing wrong with it. Oh, hold on. How does this work? Okay. <laughs> um, n n nothing wrong with this. Uh, totally enjoyable. Uh, kind of fluff, uh, uh, big two sort of, uh, just, you know, whatever, um, uh, you know, uh, good craft, uh, well put together, um, zero impact. Uh, I, there's no chance that I'm going to reach for this, uh, either for my own enjoyment or for, uh, to learn something. Right. So I guess that this now belongs to Craigslist or whatever, you know, like, <laughs> but, uh, but then again, the, 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 but there's a, uh, there's a Sin City volume down there that I just uh, in the same pile. It's conceivable that I'll reach for that for ideas. It's conceivable which, that that, that yeah. I'll use that as a point of reference for something. Which and, arc is it? Uh, which which one of the Sin City books? Yeah, uh, it's actually the most trash. It's Helen Back, which is uh, you don't uh, like uh, Helen Back. Wow. Helen Back, go re go reread it. It's a pile of shit. And uh, <laughs> I I say this as a. Frank Miller super fan with deep respect for even his worst period. Like I like Holy Terror. You know what I mean? Like I, I think, I think he always has something to offer, even when he's kind of And look, everybody, 
we whisper around what happened to Frank Miller. Everybody knows that Frank Miller uh, has had some struggles. He just health. can't draw Wolverine anymore, man. Come no, on. listen, I'm not mad. That's a, if we, we could talk about that all day. I'm happy to have that conversation. Uh, I saw that blow up uh, on the internet yeah. the other day. I am grateful for Frank Miller's art in any circumstance. And I thought that the people slamming Frank Miller, uh, like particularly the artists, uh, they should have their fingers cut off. And, 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 and here's why is because opinions are opinions. I think this, I think Helen back is a trash book. It's as easily as worst writing. Uh, and the art degrades throughout the course of the actual series. I offer that as a critic who also thinks that that man is my superior in every real way. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so I, I, I think Frank Miller, I, there's not, I'm going to work hard to distinguish myself in comic books. It's a medium that I love a great deal and I will never exit Frank Miller's shadow. And I am completely at peace with that. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, 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 my criticisms of him uh, are, I hope, uh, a gnat biting an elephant. You understand? It's, it, it's just, uh, it's just, Hey, this, th- this is not a strong book. Now, all that said, the artists that, that uh, came for him, uh, and there wasn't many, but, but, but a few of the, the kind of new Jack guys uh, ca- came for him about <clears throat> the, uh, the Wolverine cover and, and all that. And uh, not an attractive Wolverine, don't get me wrong. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like that wasn't, it wasn't a beautiful cover. And I also think that we need to be honest about the fact that, yeah, everybody, variants – are piles of worthless shit. Mm-hmm. Like it, 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 now broadly, obviously there's guys who do great work, but then there's also the nature of that market is a lot of that is just spit out into the world. I never uh, see one that's much better than the A cover to tell you the truth. Like most books, I, I think the A cover is just fine and it's mostly mm-hmm. better than the variants. Nine times Often. Before. Often now, you know, I, I, I'm trying to circumvent that on books and, and, and I'm trying to offer people that, but the fact is that, pardon me, that the, it wouldn't, it wouldn't shock anybody if Frank Miller's best work didn't appear on a cover of Wolverine reboot 730. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, it wouldn't, I don't think that that would shock anybody, but I also think at this point in his career as well. Like, I mean, yes, sure. Uh, Sure. Uh, uh, But I also think that there was a lot of, um, a lot of people pretending not to know a thing. And and the thing that they were pretending not to know is that, uh, since to, since 1999, right. So uh, Helen Beck is a great example. Uh, Helen Beck, when I was reading it, I found it absolutely fascinating because, it's Frank Miller doing his super expressive thing, but also taking a couple shortcuts that we hadn't seen him take before and taking some rests that I hadn't seen him take before. And any artist will tell you, you can be good or even great in your fifties in your sixties. Some even in their seventies, but you are going to figure out a lot of workarounds for the things that you cannot do as well. Yeah. And it's, it's like sports. The, a, a young athlete can rely uh, on, on athleticism, uh, on uh, the fact that their body's perfectly trained uh, and honed. Mm-hmm. Older fighters, older, older athletes have to rely on, on skill and, and learned experience. Right. So uh, F- Frank Miller is now in the, uh, he's embraced cartooning, not co- like, like I'm not talking about, uh, not necessarily the type of, uh, uh, comic book art that we see, uh, in, in certainly the big two, but, but, uh, he's embraced cartooning. And part of that I believe is because, uh, his, you know, his ability to render convincing, uh, proportion figure, proportion figures are, is no longer as strong as it used to be. Right. And, nothing wrong with it. It's just part of the journey. You know know what I mean? And, 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 uh, uh, Chris, Chris Boccolo, I don't enjoy his new art. Don't enjoy it. Uh, he's a brilliant artist and, uh, I believe that he, um, 
he's embracing the same type of uh, of cartooning that Frank Miller is at this point, which is, I know what I'm doing. I know how to I know how to tell a story in this medium. I'm not going to be bound by uh, realistic proportions or or, or 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 any of this stuff that is not as expressive. Uh, and look, let's Chris Bacalo has been thumbing his nose at at uh, the conventions of, of uh, superhero comics for some time. He's always been allowed to work within his style and he, and he is an awesome talent. Frank Miller obviously started in a, in a more uh, traditional style and, and very quickly migrated to something uh, uh, well above it. Uh, but both of those fellas are somewhat hamstrung or not Frank Miller anymore, but they've been in the, at some point in their careers, they've been hamstrung by, uh, kind of the conventions of of uh, of direct market comic books uh, of uh, or big two comic books specifically. Yeah. Who can blame them for wanting to step out of it entirely and say to hell with it? I'm the name, and I'm going to draw somebody with a head that is uh, twice as big as it should be. You know, <laughs> like like like. And and here's my thing. God bless them. I think they're right. You know, <laughs> like and they make it more interesting. So. Johnny, that's all to say that the Wolverine cover was not exceptional to me in any way. Uh, but I also thought that the artists that were slamming him, they know better. You know yeah. what I mean? Like the, the, they, the, the, You know the circumstance. You know the journey. You know, well, if you've been following comics, you know the whole... Like, I think the colorist didn't do him any favors. I think that uh, no, I, black and white, it probably looked a lot better. It did. And uh, specifically his Ben Grimm in black and white looked really good actually. But uh, yeah, and people haven't figured out it, it's interesting. I, uh, so I, I hire colorists with some regularity and <clears throat> I mean, that's, that's really the un- most underappreciated art in all of, all of comicing, right? Because it's a, uh, well, probably lettering is really underappreciated, but, but, <laughs> but, but uh, uh, colorists are, uh, they don't get their due because it's like being a good actor, right? Uh, we all know what a great actor is uh, and we know what a bad actor is, but when somebody is a solid, good actor, we tend not to appreciate them. Uh, and, but it is, it is really a talent. Like I, I watched a, my family watches a lot of shark movies, right? Like my, my, my girlfriend, my, her son and I, the, we watched a ton of shark movies. Shark movies are not, not good. And like, uh, like three headed shark attack and like, like those type of shark, like Sharknado, um, co- cocaine no, shark is coming out. We don't, we don't, we don't go typically <laughs> to the Sharknado point, but, uh, we'll watch any piece of crap shark movie. We, we watched man eater last night and, uh, the acting in it w- was at times bad enough that it was, it called attention to, to how bad everything else was. Right. For, for example, and this, this has application for comics. So everybody bear with me. Um, there were scenes in this movie where something was happening off screen. And the reason it was happening off screen is because they couldn't afford to depict it. Right. Like, yeah. uh, like it, it, so all we had was characters reactions to the <laughs> dramatic thing happening off screen. And you have to be a, very good actor to sell that right because it, it's like being a musician uh if you're a three-piece you're quite naked you know what i mean like e- each person like if you've ever seen a great three-piece uh you should shake their hands because there, there, there's no room for error in that right so uh being on camera at a, at a, a fixed shot where you just have to say he's being eaten no Oh my God. And all of your failings uh, are going to be on display. And, uh, you know, that, that's, uh, I, I, I completely lost how this comes back to Frank Miller, but, but this is all to say, this is all to say shark movies aren't that good. Frank Miller is. So we got a Patrick Kidlow and shark comic coming out in the near future, man. That'd be really cool. Like a crime noir, like, uh, you know what? I I think I just ordered to one of the books I'm going to be reading in the U.S. that I uh, in stock trade. Uh, I, I I just got the 
uh, Pat Mills' uh, book, uh, uh, Hookjaw, the collection of uh, Hookjaw, which is, um, uh, I think helps. it's... It, it, uh, it's, it's, it's so, you, huh? Yeah, so so he, he did a... Uh, I think it's Hookjaw, is it not? I just ordered it. Yeah, okay, so <clears throat> the... Uh, <laughs> the Pat Mills, uh, okay, so it's uh, Mills and uh, Sola, right? And, and uh, it's a '70s uh, shark uh, comic uh, that I guess got them in trouble. I guess it was uh, at, at any rate. Uh, it looks like there was a reboot by with Cy Spurrier writing a couple oh. of years ago, maybe. Um, yeah. But uh, I don't know. I, I I'll give any. I, I'm in shark. I'm in shark land now. Oh. <laughs> Pat Mills is class, anyways, man. I yeah, love yeah. Him. Requiem, Vampire oh. Night, um, Shaw. Listen, I mean, like his heavy metal stuff's really good. Pat Mills is, um, I mean, he's not unsung, right? Because if you're a British comics guy, yeah, you, the you consider him. Yeah, yeah, but he, so he's not unsung, but but he is uh, underappreciated. I, but you know what? Let, let's talk more about criticism, shall we? Uh, <laughs> this. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I don't know if you've ever read this third world war. Uh, it's, it's a Pat Mills book and it is uh, painful. Um, it, it is all of Mills uh, kind of worse, qual- worst worst uh, uh, qualities as a writer uh, on display. I'm still enjoying it in the same way that I enjoy even the worst Frank Miller work, right? The worst Frank Miller work is still better than any of his critics, any, any artist that could offer a criticism of Frank Miller is playing themselves because his worst work is, is better than theirs. Now, Frank, or pardon me, Pat Mills, his worst work might be better than anything I do, but uh, it's almost fascinating to, to just hold some, something from somebody that you hold in high esteem that you think is just a, a misguided. Right. And <clears throat> this is, his explicitly political work, all of his work is political, I would argue, much more so than, than really any American. Uh, but uh, his, uh, I mean, all those 2008 D guys are fascinating because. Yeah. Uh, the, the stuff they get away with politically in, in their books that like a lot of people just gloss over. Like if you ever yeah. read like, any actual like Strodium Dog or Judge Red, like there's a lot of commentary and like of those strips, man. And some of it's it, pretty it, brutal. It's it's all basically all of it is coming from an anti-authoritarian uh, uh, British socialist perspective. Every, every single thing that they do has some of some of that infused right into it, right? And now they're per, they, they are frontiersmen because they're they're great examples of their notion of of like British socialism as a concept, right? Is like probably up for real criticism in 2023, whereas they used to be true vanguards of something <laughs> at the moment that these works are written. Mm-hmm. So, so in some ways they, they, they uh, exemplify the thing that I'm sometimes trying to write about, but um, they, they uh, but this book of his is just an absolute chore. And a lot of people love it. A lot of people have good memories of it, but it's an absolute chore because it is explicitly unapologetically a polemic. It, it, it's, it's trying to teach you something on every goddamn page about you know, uh, exploitation of the third world, uh, the military industrial complex, uh, consumerism, capitalism, uh, and every, and and as a result, because these are, and I'll be frank, Pat Mills is, is, uh, uh, he's a little bit more of a policy wonk than, than many creators. So, so you are getting, you are getting a little bit more I guess what the kids call praxis, right? In in, in these books than you do in, in a lot of others, but it's still at the end of the day, lessons for children, right? Like I, like there, and don't get me wrong. This is, uh, what year? 1986, maybe uh, 1989. So, uh, 1989. It was groundbreaking at the time. Yes. What he was talking about. Exactly. And I, and, and I was a child and it would have blown my mind. You know what I mean? But as an adult, yeah, I, I'm quite aware that uh, Western uh, Western corporations exploit the labor of the third world. Yes, I'm. I'm. Uh, you know, there's almost nothing you can teach me on that topic. To be totally frank, you know, it's, so mm-hmm. it, it's uh, uh, it, you know, reading it through this lens, it's it's probably a bit like watching Lenny Bruce. You know, what I mean, like like uh, is Lenny Bruce going to land? 
in 2023? Well, maybe if you're maybe if you're a stand-up comedian, you can find something in Lenny Bruce to really appreciate. You know, I mean, you you, you can see the um, even if it seems rudimentary at times, you can still see uh, how foundational and and, and uh, uh, sturdy uh, his act was. You could see that, but are the jokes going to land? Probably not. You know, what I mean, and, and and that's how this feels. Where mm. I I can appreciate everything about this except for what it amounts to, you know. But anyway, that's all to say, Pat Mills is another man who I'll be living in his shadow for the rest of my life. So uh, <laughs> please, Pat Mills, take my criticisms with the grain of the grain yeah. of salt intended. Yeah. But I mean, like you said, you're you're reading it in, like in 2023 when it was written in 89 right so you got to take that into consideration when you read some older works by creators because you know the landscape has changed so much over those years that, yeah. that it's like jesus did i really put that in there <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> after like when you look back at it yeah for sure <laughs> I, I mean i mean look uh uh there's nothing there I think has uh, tweets in it, right? Like how, how poorly is that going to age? You know what I mean? It's going to look terrible. Yeah. Like it, yeah. It, there's, this is a, this is a thing that I've, it, it hit me like a, well, the like blue check to... mark jokes that you have in there definitely have a different connotation nowadays already. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, well, that's the thing, right? Is that there's, um, <laughs> I, I think that culturally we have to come to some recognition that everything ages badly. Uh, you know what I mean? Like a, a, everything, there's not a single thought that you could have that is n- not of this era, right? We all suffer from the type of mm-hmm. present. We suffer from pres- presentism in two respects. We suffer from it in that we, we judge the past uh, on our understanding of the world in this moment, mm-hmm. the actual definition of presentism. But then we also have this other type where we somehow assume that we are the last in thought yeah. that, 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 that we are, that whatever we've arrived to, and it, it, you want to get really dark. I, I, there's an example of this that I, that I, I well, let's not get that dark, but, the, but this is, this is just to say that there is, um, there's been ideas through, throughout our history, uh, even as recent as, as, uh, uh, last century that, um, we're seen as the absolute bleeding edge uh, of progressive thought that we now understand to be misguided caveman shit. You, you know what I mean? And uh, this is this is human history. This is how it goes, right? So, like anything that we think, like think about how many, for example. Again, not, not to be Mr. Vegan, but like I've been vegan for a long, long time. Mm-hmm. Let, let, let's say that that puts me ahead of uh, what I assume will be the next significant rights struggle, right? Uh, okay, so congratulations. Bully for me. Uh, uh, I'm ahead on something. Can we imagine all of the topics on which I am an absolute troglodyte by comparison to uh, my great-grandchildren? I can't. We can't conceive of them. <laughs> you know what I mean? We can, we can't even understand the things that w- w- we take on face value now. We take uh, uh, as just absolute fact, uh, uh, axiomatic, un- unquestionable uh, realities of, of our lives that are going to be looked back on as uh, you know absolute atrocities. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we can't conceive of it. So the idea that our the jokes are going to land well even 10 months later is absurd. <laughs> so it's like uh, I've given up on trying to – I see uh, some dialogue in, in, uh, around comics, the discourse about, um, you know, do you want – do you want symbols of modernity in your books? Do you want do, do, like do, – or, or current, let's say. Do, 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 do you want uh, current moment stuff in your books or is it always going to seem – tired and dated um yeah will but that uh, we all just write in the moment we're in you know i mean even the lang- even the the syntax that we use is going to seem completely sh- like you know chaucer d- is is not a poppin for me you know <laughs> and, that, and that's because uh the language has changed quite a bit um so nothing's gonna age well 
uh, including my work, uh, we're all going to be consumed by an expanding sun anyway. So it, 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 it does not matter. <laughs> you know? In the end, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I'd like to come back and just let people know <laughs> your books that are coming out. So we have Stringer. <laughs> we'll come back because we got to try to sell your books here a little sure, bit. Sure. You know? <laughs> so we have Stringer coming out. Uh, its release date is still for June 14th, I believe. The hardcover. Sounds uh, right. Yeah. You have a uh, leaded gasoline that's coming out through Black Mass. Should be dropping on June 28th. So people can yeah, pick that up in shops. So, so this one, everybody, uh, leaded gasoline is, uh, I, I call it a horror book and, and I think it is a horror book. And, and, uh, uh, Matt Pozzolo who runs black mask is, he said, you keep calling it a horror book. What, why? And I said, what do you mean? There's, <laughs> there's people getting slashed to death on, on multiple pages. And he goes, yeah, but if I was trying to sell this to Hollywood, it would, I, I, I if I gave it as a horror book, they would, they would all correct me and say it's a thriller. And I said, well, this is why Hollywood is fucking stupid. Uh, it, it is, uh, it's a horror book, everybody, but, uh, I don't, I mean, I don't know what's, what's the motion picture seven is seven, a horror movie or a thriller. I think you could make it the argument either lines, way. Yeah. But like, it, it's definitely freaky enough to be a horror, called a horror film. Like and man, I love Lorenzo's work in this. I listen, I finally got the, uh, the other day, I got confirmation that it's being printed on newsprint. Newsprint, I use, nice. I, I, I use this because I haven't touched it yet. So, so uh, I, I, I use quote tweets for that because, or, or uh, quotes for that because I, I, uh, it, it's the printer. We could only find one printer willing to do it. It's costing us more money, everybody. So uh, whenever, but... so so everybody, whenever you see that discourse about. Oh, the comics should go back to cheap manufacture like like <laughs> newsprint. It's not going to be newsprint, everybody. It's it, it costs more. I assure it you, costs more. But it'll uh, have no, that smell, though, right? Yeah. So here's here's the other thing. It's newsprint slash manga paper. That's how this printer. Okay. Works. Okay. So it will. I'm certain it will not be proper newsprint, but okay. it will have. It it'll should be have stiffer, that, though. Yeah, it'll be yeah. kind of rougher, it, it but it'll should, have that kind of brown tone to it. it, it God willing. So, uh, I look forward to it a lot because we're going for a whole aesthetic thing here. We're going for kind of a um, I don't I don't know if trash is the right word, but we're because it, it's so, so I should be delicate with this. It's it's a it's inspired by a real story, and the real story resulted in the deaths of of many. I guess what in the 2023 parlance you would say marginalized women, right? So we're talking about street walkers. You're talking about people that live on the margins. And uh, so I'm trying to be sensitive about what is all, like one of my favorite movies is Zodiac, right? I think it's a brilliant mm -hmm. movie. I think it, it's, and it has to do a funny thing where it has to uh, depict a real life event that, uh, impacted the families of those people in a really irrevocable way, right? Uh, but is also needs to be entertaining for two and a half hours. And uh, I found this to be very challenging because I'm trying to, there's obviously composite characters in the, in the detectives, but, and, and uh, to completely fictionalized uh, lead, but the, the women are all real women uh, that lived and, and uh, you know, obviously we're not doing, we don't have likeness rights. I'm not trying to do their faces in the book, but like the, the times that the, the, the circumstances of their murders are accurate or at least, you know, fiction accurate. And uh, it's been a challenge because when you're dealing with real people that have real families that really love them, uh, it, it horror is tough. Uh, but it is sorry if I turned anybody off with this, but it is a very entertaining book <laughs> and it is, it is going for, uh, it's going for like a, um, an eighties, uh, an eighties black and white boom, uh, uh, t t type of book, you know, yeah, it, it, Lorenzo's it, use of shadows in it, the way he draws a shot is just fantastic. I love it. Like it's a black and white book and the way he does the shadows from the street lights and, 
like a car door open and how it casts a shadow over half the body or part of the face. It's just fantastic. He so, does fantastic work in this. I, I didn't. Sp I I put all my focus on on Marco uh, and Paul earlier. L Lorenzo is somebody else that I'm uh, I am uh, really blessed to be working with, uh, and specifically uh, now Lorenzo could do a lot of different types of books. He, he, he oversees. He's done action books and stuff like that. But he he uh, what he brought to this one uh, was an incredible amount of mood and. and um, you know, I, I'll, this is me being totally honest. Uh, I like Lorenzo's work, and, and I I wrote him and asked him if he'd be interested in in doing a horror book. And I I really thought that it would be when I pitched that to him. Would you like to do this together? In my mind, I thought I'd play to his strengths and make it kind of uh, uh, a little bit more high high impact, a little bit more high velocity, and as the script was coming together, I was thinking, uh, oh, this, this poor bastard, I, I, I'm really giving him like a police procedural, <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I'm, I'm really, uh, and, and I hope that he still enjoys this experience. I hope he, and he has knocked it out of the park. He, he, uh, uh, is giving it real mood. And, uh, I, I think that, I mean, look, th this is, uh, such a big topic. I, I don't ex expect us to really be able to tackle it, but, um, kind of uh a, a, an aesthetic gestalt right like 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 the the the, the wholeness of a package uh this book is shooting for a type of a, a, a type of uh sorry i'm coming with a lot of words right now it's a type of simulacra where this book didn't exist in the 80s nor do i think too many books like it actually existed in the 80s but you have to uh if we're successful, you read it as though it, it, it could have been one of those black and white explosion books. You, you, you read it as though it could have been a, a uh, from a forgotten indie publisher. Maybe it's a guy who put out three books and uh, is one of those back issue 25 cent real fines, you know, and, and, and that's uh, to pull that off. You, you, you would need kind of a, a just a commitment to the aesthetic, and and, and Lorenzo has that uh, in spades. Yeah. I, I think he's, yeah. he's done an excellent job. I, I and honestly, yeah. honestly, this is like a very writer thing to say, but uh, I'm just I get new pages, and it's just like he gets better with every page. He, yeah. He's uh, he, he's really coming into something with this book, and I'm uh, really great grateful to be working with him. How many issues is this supposed to be? Five. So this is so this is four, and here's the model. Okay. Here's the model. I just got Black Mask to greenlight me on another series of four, not the same. Um, so let me put it like this: Black Mask and I have a good relationship. Um, they uh, really the first to publish me, and a place that I'll uh, uh, go back to. Uh, throughout my career, I, I assume, because uh, to me, working relationships are really, really important. And uh, like it, it, at Image, uh, where a lot of people uh, end up because they offer the best terms and because the name is important, and uh, that's all true. But I also, I also on, on a personal level, uh, like Eric Stevenson. And, and it's it's somewhat. And when I when I was at Aftershock, uh, Mike Martz was there, and I, I like Mike Martz a great deal. Yeah, it's it's important to me that I like I like everybody. <laughs> you know, like, and I know that that's not good or professional. I understand that, particularly if I wanted to work in a corporate atmosphere, like with a, a big two comics or something. Yeah, of course, you're not going to get along with everybody, and you don't need to get along with everybody in life. And sometimes bosses are dicks, and that's what it is. But uh, for me personally, I, I've I've had the most joy in my life when I've worked in office environments where my boss's office was next to mine and I can walk in and talk to him about what's on my mind. I, I've come to value this a lot. I don't – I, without judge, – I'm going to say this without judgment. I don't understand the, 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 the corporate way of doing it where – 
you might trust your boss, but you don't trust the fact that they're conveying that to the boss above them. You don't trust that boss at all because you never met them. You, and, and that type of shit, I, I want nothing to do with it. So uh, Black Mask is uh, Matt Pizzolo, who, 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 who uh, is Black Mask. He, uh, he and I get on. So uh, I the goal is to deliver 12 months of high quality comics that I can make make financial sense. And by that, I don't mean I'm getting some great page rate or anything like that. What I mean is I want to, and eventually at image, I'd like to make this the case too, is just nonstop books of a, of a high caliber that are, that balance the book, that balance the budget in such a way that there's self-sustaining. Now, okay. Uh, obviously that's everybody's goal to a degree, but, um, I'm big on catalog. I, I don't think that, uh, I think the age of the hit is almost over. Um, or, or at least it's in complete transition. Like if you look at some of the guys who have had real hits the last few years, we've thrown them in the dumpster a year and a half later. Mm. We've completely forgot. And I don't mean the hits. I mean, some of those might last for people. I mean, th th there's not a, um, like respectfully to Donny Cates, who is much more of a name than I am, and 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 I I don't know the man, so I got nothing bad to say about him. But uh, he 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 was uh, the prime conversation for for two Couple years. years there, yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm, he's still got a good career. There's nothing, but like Al Ewing, maybe Al Ewing would be another example when he was on Immortal Hulk. Mm -hmm. big thing jason aaron jason aaron great example jason aaron i think is a great yeah. writer he, but 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 he uh he, he the last few years have uh w whether you could blame his writing perhaps people didn't like his avengers that much but you could also say um perhaps he was not in a position to win in some ways um mm -hmm. it, it's always difficult to tell why something didn't work and you also can't stay on top forever right that's just a fact but I, I think that the, the way that I'm going to win is by catalog. I want just like Pat Mills. Pat Mills is a guy, if you look at his uh, bibliography, it's, it's an absurdity. <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh, I want people to trip over my work the same way that people trip over his work and just come to the, they say, you know, if I think about it, he's, he's great. Right. So pa Pat Mills is one of those guys that <clears throat> maybe you'd reach for Frank Miller, maybe m m uh, in terms of writing, who would you reach for? You, uh, you know, some people would say Claremont, um, whoever, whoever you'd reach for in, in uh, DM comics, uh, maybe Pat Mills wouldn't be in the conversation immediately, particularly because he's British. But if you just look at the summation of his work, you go, oh, yeah, oh. Oh, I forgot. I like, I like eighty percent of what I've read by him, yeah. and he's and he's written two hundred things. You know, what I mean? so, um, so yeah, I uh, I think that that's how I intend to win is just by having, uh, everything that with my name on it is of quality, and everything that uh, and it just it 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 comes out at a regular clip. So, uh, with Black Mask. We'll do a formal announcement sometime soon, but we're going to be doing, uh, God willing, we'll be doing um, uh, three series of four, uh, and uh, each one different different horror series, all grounded horror, no ghosts, no goblins, um, kind of just you know rough be man being chased by another man with knife. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that type of, that type of work. And, and, you know, with talent like Lorenzo, can you, can you elevate uh, that type of story? And, and, and it's, yeah, I think you can, you know, and uh, uh, hopefully we pull that off with leaded gasoline and hopefully with the next project uh, as well. I think if you said horror noir, like people would yeah. understand it a little yeah. bit. Or yes. thriller, thriller noir, horror thriller noir, you know, it fits within the, yeah, for sure. There's, there's yeah. a really good mystery to it. You know what I mean? At least from the issue that I read, there's a good setup. And 
Um, and you the, seem to really be on a noir kick because Stringer is also just yeah. really prime, really good. A crime drama, a lot more fun and funny though that one. Like because yeah, I mean, it's a drug. Yeah. There's some great moments. Yeah, but, but yeah, I kind of really like that you're on a noir kick, which I guess you kind of always have kind of been in that genre. But like some of your image work kind of threw me off a little bit, but. I, well, I'm really happy you're back at Black Mask, though. I have not read a Black Mask book ever that I thought sucked. So they are so, a very so, label, in my opinion. So that's interesting because Black Mask is one of those ones that uh, he, he, Pizzolo has put on a, a lot of different talent. And uh, it kind of doesn't get the credit because uh, it put him at the center of a culture war that he he doesn't really – he's not really engaged with that end of it. He, he just wants to put out work that he thinks is uh, challenging or, or transgressive. And I don't think he'd ever put out something explicitly uh, right leaning uh, because of his, his own personal views, but, but he, he would put out like, for example, uh, he, he's very heavily tied in with, uh, with uh, the Faust fellas, right? Like he, he's, he's the one oh, that, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Quinn and, Vigil. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and uh, that's because that stuff to him is still, even in 2023, transgressive. You know, it's still challenging. And, and uh, he, that's what he loves. And at the time that he kind of plotted, he, he put himself in the center of, like I said, like a little bit of a comic book culture war where he was seen as kind of like, you know, Black Mask had this reputation as being this, uh, I don't even know, like what, what, uh, like uh, whatever the parlance is, SJW or whatever, right? Like uh, whatever people wanted to put on it, and uh, he ended up grabbing a lot of talent that probably wouldn't have gotten any shine anywhere else. Well, it got and poached really fast too. I mean, uh, poached really fast. Yeah, yeah. yeah Matthew yeah. Rosenberg, um, Nadler, and um, Thompson. Like a lot of people came through Black Mask really fast and ended up really big really fast. Yeah, uh, 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 Max Visaggio, um, yeah, Vita. I think I think Vita's first first work was Black Mask work. I could be wrong. Um, uh, possibly, yeah. But uh, or no, you know what? I so I don't know if anybody. I don't know if they talk about this. I believe Vita's first work it remains unpublished. Uh, uh, they and Rosenberg uh, were working on a thing together that I think remains unpublished, but. Um, but anyway, the, 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 the point is, uh, yes, I, well, and it's funny. I, I, I uh, as, uh, Pozzola will joke with me, uh, I remain unpoached. Uh, I, <laughs> I am the, uh, I'm, I'm the one from that class that, uh, that didn't get that phone call. Uh, but I will say that, uh, respectfully to everybody else's careers uh, and everybody, you know, everybody's done their thing. Um, it uh it has given me a lot of perspective uh to not uh you know i i, I in addition to being called left wing and right wing and all that bullshit in my emails the other the other thing that i got from frontiersman was that i am i'm too critical this i got this more than either accusation of politics i i i uh, I, I got the accusation that i'm too critical of uh, big two comics and it's it's a hard line to walk because I have criticisms and I think those criticisms are important for a lot of reasons. But on a non aesthetic level, the practical the practical application of my criticisms is that Marvel and DC buoy the entire market, and without them, comic book stores close within a week. Yeah, they're needed evil. I mean, not even evil, but they're needed. Um... They're, they're needed. Let's just say it's, it, it, they're, they're, let's put it like this. They're the base of the ecosystem. You, right. you, you absolutely need them. And so I need them to, I, I don't need them to just survive. I need them to thrive, which is crazy because they're my competition. And I, I, you know, year to year, sometimes I like their books. Sometimes I don't, but I don't have, I'm not like rooting for them. You know what I mean? I'm not like on their side as like a, you know, a, but I have to root for them because uh, I don't. I, I need them not just to do, to stay uh, uh, in uh, in business. I need them to stay 
relevant. I need people to come into comic book stores to buy things and then yeah. see my book and feel excited about my book, which they didn't know existed because they're not plugged into to, to this is a part of this whole process that I think people don't understand. People don't have time to live on comic book news sites. It's probably 5% of the comic book readers in the world who are on comic book news sites. Now they have dedicated readerships because the people that read that are on those news sites are very intense, but they, they don't have time in their lives. They have other things going on or they have other interests or they just don't enjoy that type of media. So they, they come into a comic book store to buy Spider-Man and then they see my book, they pick it up, they look at it, they make a decision for themselves. Now, for this whole thing to work, for, for, small, pu for small publishers to exist and for small creators to get off the ground and build their careers, uh, we need a strong enough direct market that retailers feel comfortable taking a chance on leaded gasoline with the understanding that somebody that comes in there to pick up Blade will also look at the cover of leaded gasoline, pick it up, give it a shot, take it home. And we're in this terrible space where we were relying on pull box orders, we're relying on pre-order for, for uh, small publishers, and there's no way on earth outside of the diamond catalog for the average person, and that's not average. The average person's not going through the diamond catalog. So there's so to be clear, there's no way on earth for the average person to know that my books exist. And this is why I need Marvel and DC in health. So when I'm critical of Marvel and DC, it's not because it, I'm I'm angry at them. And and you have to be somebody in my position has to be careful because if you're too critical of the biggest names, you just look jealous, you just look bitter, right? And and this is what some of those, uh, as I said, like the, the some of the artists that came for Frank Miller on on his Wolverine, you just you look you embarrass yourself. There's no reason to do that. Um, but I do need these, I need these institutions healthy. <laughs> so, um, but, uh, having not gone through them, uh, has been good for me as a creative person. I, I you know, it's not good for me. Uh, you know, it, it, it's a nicer income to work for those companies, certainly. Uh, but it is, uh, as a creative person, I now worry, for example, that working under a very um, hands-on editor might might be a problem because uh, I've edited a number of books myself as I've put them together myself and uh, gone over every page myself and gone over every line of dialogue myself. And uh, sometimes I have helped, sometimes I do not. Uh, shout out to uh, James Heppelwhite, who who does my uh, editing for my image books, uh, uh, Frontiersman, Antioch, and uh, what else is coming in that line. But it is uh, – I've put a lot of books together. And uh, working underneath um, working underneath an editor might be a problem, but this is all to say that I think that it uh, not having been walked through the big two system has led me to make better books. Uh, now – Maybe that's cope, you know, the people in the chat could tell me, but, <laughs> but, but I think that for myself, when I see my work getting better, I think it has more to do with having to endeavor on those things myself yeah. than uh, but, having somebody redline me on everything. But I think the, in the big two, the, one of the big maybe complaints you can make about them is the editorial is too hands on. They, they Not just that, but I think uh, the industry, we're losing a lot of young readers to manga. Oh, like, yeah. A lot of young kids are gravitating towards manga. And why is that? It's like, I think DC and Marvel, because as a kid, what got me into comics was like Spider-Man. And mm -hmm. I don't see young kids going into stores to pick up Spider-Man comics anymore. No. Like, why no. is that? Why Why are we not able, why, why are the big two not able to go grasp those young readers that will later turn into a reader like me that'll pick up your book or to keep 
to keep I, I, the fans there to buy the books. Like I don't, I, I don't know what it is that they're doing I, I wrong. Think it's or... Because manga has that whole shonen side to it that is just designed specifically for that demographic to grab youngsters and keep them there and enthralled because the books are generally and like they are accessible for older readers too. There's a lot of people, older people I know who love like My Hero and stuff like that. But at, at the same time, it is just completely manufactured from the ground up to be uh, a kid's book. Yeah. Well, it, it, let's think about it for a second. When Spider-Man started, what was Spider-Man's uh, goal? Spider-Man's goal was to balance a complicated life as, as a teenager uh, with this secret identity that he has where he, he feels some obligation for the death of his, his uncle. Okay. Uh, straightforward enough, right? Uh, my, uh, the chainsaw man wants to touch a boob. <laughs> yeah. it, it, it gets no more straightforward and relatable to an adolescent yeah. than, than I want to touch a boob. And uh, yes, I agree with you. So content matters. The, the actual uh, th things happening in the book uh, books matter. But I also think that there's another thing happening where comic book, Western comic books just look and feel stale to a kid uh in the same way that gun smoke l looks and feels stale to me my father's 80 years old he watches gun smoke it is difficult i'm sure that if i watched gun smoke i would if you like watch the first couple seasons you'd probably like it it's kind of noiry at the beginning i'm sure <laughs> that, that's what i was gonna say i'm sure if i sat down to watch gun smoke i would find because a lot of the writing of that period television writing gets not the credit it deserves we, we've jumped to this world where the sopranos is where television began but it's really i mean not true right like it, it, there's uh, been great television uh for a long long time and uh i bet that i would i bet that i would like Gunsmoke if i watched it but to my eye it I, I, is dated and and and, and uh difficult to to uh, interface with so uh, big band music would be another example or boogie or boogie music uh, now these are all valid forms of expression that just feel like they predate me in a way that is unrelatable and, and that's how comics feel that's how western comics feel and this is the thing that the the big two need to confront is that they this feels like gun smoke i'm that's, 41 and i feel that way when i go and look at the marble section of my lts man like yeah their covers just look bad you know what I mean? I, 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 listen, it's so hard for me to talk about this without slamming people that are, are colleagues or peers or whatever. I think the covers for so, some of the big two covers should should result in somebody getting a demotion. It, 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 they're, they're really, really terrible. And uh, you're not going to capture young people with that. You might not capture anybody with that. <laughs> and uh, I again, I have a million criticisms. You know, I, look, it's it's a tough thing. People We're don't want to. Guys, we feel you, bro. Like we we. If you don't want to get any deeper into it, like we understand. No, I mean, I, 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 I don't mind. I, I've already kind of burned my bridges at these companies. I'm. I, it, it's. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and look, to anybody, I, I know that sometimes you get recommended things that I say, and you get forwarded my newsletter. I'm talking to the editors now. I. I, I I don't wish you anything but success. I uh, I want your books to be good. I need them to be good. Um, and I think that uh, probably the people, the editors at these companies are probably facing real uphill battles to, to make something artful. And when they pull it off, it, it, it should be a feather in their cap and they should, they, they should be uh, given accolades for that. But um broadly i think th that the meat and potato comics that are coming out are uh, of lower uh mm -hmm. quality than they than they can be uh, or no than they have to be <laughs> you know what I mean? like they have to be of higher quality um because uh we're basically uh, let me put it like this uh and, and uh you know if any editor wants to message me and prove me wrong it's fine whatever but here's how it feels to everybody on the street. It, it feels as though uh, executives are running, running out the clock, uh, looking for retirement packages or searching for other jobs while an American art form uh, of periodical comic books is getting kicked further and further into the dirt. 
and that's how it feels. So I could be wrong, but but editors, if that's how it feels, that's a problem. <laughs> you know I mean? like it, it feels like the managerial class is uh, completely disengaged from the outcome uh, of, or from the product. It, it feels like they are completely disengaged, which maybe they always were, right? Like maybe that's it's yeah, entirely. No. But it can't feel that way. If it yeah. feels that way, people have to be real about how things feel. Like, yeah. It doesn't matter what, what real is. It matters that y your entire readership, even the ones who continue to buy because they're hopelessly addicted, e even they are in a malaise. I, not, to, not to name names, but uh, you know, to, I was talking to... I was talking to a, about as powerful figures as, as exist in comics, and and he was frank as frank as hell. He said, "I said, yeah, there seems to be a bit of, of a malaise." He said, "How could there not be?" He, he said, "All the books are trash," and this is a guy who puts out books, right? Like this is a guy. This is a top of the industry guy. He said, "There's nothing exciting," and no, and it's like, yeah, what do we do about that? What do we do about that? That and this person I was talking to was in in principle a person who could could make that change. You would think, right? But the reason they can't is because they can still only put out what is what is available, what what, it, what is offered. You know what I mean? Like, like like what the talent brings is what the talent brings. So so it, it's uh, do we have a talent de deficit? Maybe you know what I mean. But do we have an do we have an excitement deficit? This is why like Donny Cates receives a lot of criticism but one thing you can't take away from him is that he got people excited right yeah and, and, and it's and uh do we need 10 donny cates well you know what that's hard for me to say because i'm not a donny cates style of writer so it would be difficult for me to advocate against my own interests and say yeah we need nothing but donnie's but you know we we definitely need more donnie's <laughs> I can I can say as a guy who might be put out of work if if the market just shifted to nonstop Donnie's I still got to say it would it would sell more comics you know so let's march of the Donnie's yeah yeah I mean they got to do something because I, I was buying I was still buying some big two but there's so many titles and like someone who doesn't know you walk in there and there's so many like you said poor quality titles that let's say someone hits three duds in a row. They're going to be like, fuck it. I'm not buying any more Marvel. Yeah. But there's, there's a few great titles in there that are amazing to read. Well, sucks, but so there's the amazing titles. They all have to tie into the event. Eventually. Eventually. Well, yeah. And, and, and so, the event ruins everything when it comes to that label for me. Like, yeah. so, so, so that's been a problem for a long time. And I, I, I thought that they would write that ship, but they still get a tiny little bump you know, it's in some ways we're it's like an addict with diminishing returns on on the high. You know, it, it's uh, you, you're you're chasing that thing, and you're still getting high enough to live. You know, I mean, you're not getting itchy, but 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 uh, you it, feel it, well, as they would say. But. Yeah, exactly. But you but you're not finding your way out of out of this problem. I, I'm sorry. Should I should I answer some of these questions? I I, uh, I let me see. Hold on. Funny to me because it almost seems like the opposite could be said in general as it relates to the hardcore Jason music scene. Um, I think Jeremy's talking about uh, in the comments is talking about um, when I said uh, we need the the big things to be healthy so that the little things can thrive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, well, the, so for for you know a lot of people just read comics and they and uh, and they should. They, they, it shouldn't. They shouldn't necessarily be knee deep in industry and sales numbers and things. And, and, and that's awesome, by the way, uh, that if you're not involved in those things, God bless. But, 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 uh, it, it, the way that the, this market is set up is, uh, it's not top heavy, it's top everything. And, and it, it's, uh, it, it's really, really brutal, uh, on like it's, um, it's essentially set up to keep, you know, in the way that you would expect, right? Like in the way that you would expect any any type of fixed system to work is uh, the rich get richer, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the, the 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 big two uh, shops are in a uh, in principle symbiotic relationship with them, uh, but 
you, you could argue that the shops are being exploited. Um, you could argue that there's, there's a lot of different, it would be fascinating actually to have, I, I've got a friend who's a labor organizer and, and uh, I've had him look at comics and, and he can't make sense of it really. And I, I would love to bring in a, 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 like a proper uh, economist to, to look at comics, but it's, it's just a, it's a broken cartel system. <laughs> it's just a pile of crap. So, uh, so we need the, we need the big guys to do well so that we can, uh, be those fish that uh, swim uh, under the under the gills, um, and uh, I look. That's fine. I I've never endeavored to be a mass market sales figure in, 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 in like uh, person in any way. You know, I both in music and in comics. I, it's not my goal to sell a million of everything of anything. It's my goal to sell thirty five thousand in perpetuity. You know that that, that that's the goal. Um, and, but you know what? We might, again, this is like a March of the Donnie's thing. Do we need a Donnie whose goal is to sell a hundred thousand? We might, you know I mean? It, it, it's possible. But when possible. he's good, he is really good. I got to give him his due. Look, like I'm not his biggest fan either, but like he has written some books that I, I think are outright um, bangers. You know what I mean? That, so. That's the, th well, right. Here's the thing, right? Is why does someone turn on the radio? Do they turn on the radio for the, for the deep cut? Or do they turn on the radio for for, for, the, for hit? the hits? Yeah. They turn on the radio for the hit, and and Donnie's got hits, you know. <laughs> so this is the thing. I think it's important. Again, I got nothing against Donnie, but Donnie Cates, by the way. I hate when people refer to people they don't know by their fucking first name. My my fault, uh, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Cates. Um, I got nothing against I got nothing against Mr. Cates. What, what I'll say is um, that that uh, uh, even if I did even if I disliked him as a man, even if I thought his writing was trash, none of it matters except th the man can make hits a yeah. and, and, and that's he what they need. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. and, and look, I understand. I get it. I ne I was never a, a Liefeld guy. Never once. And, uh, as I get older, I have more of an appreciation for him, but I always thought that the conversation on him was misguided. It was always, yeah, but he's not good. Right. That was always the conversation. Yeah, but he's not good. And it's like, well, look, good he had his moments. It, well, it's just good as sometimes it's not about connoisseursmanship, you know. What I mean? Sometimes it's not about uh, like let's be real. Uh, in the U.S., I don't eat fast food because none of it accommodates me. But I got to go to an airport in a few hours. They got a vegan uh, burger can here. It's called Hungry Jacks. Um, <laughs> it, 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 here. So Burger King's everybody. I'm in Australia. Burger King is Hungry Jack's here. Uh, Hungry Jack's <laughs> here has a vegan Whopper with with the vegan mayo on it. I might eat it. You know what I mean? I might be like, okay, well I'm in a rush. And and, yeah. and uh, it we got to be honest that there's a lot of people and people get insulted if you compare their food if you compare their writing to a Whopper. I understand. I I, I get it. Why somebody would feel insulted? But I don't know if you need to feel insulted. A Whopper's fed a lot of people. You know, <laughs> so, so it's like, uh, you know, it's also triage to a degree, right? How do we prioritize saving the industry? Is it going to be, well, I think we need, uh, I think we need 20 brew bakers and Phillips that, that, uh, spend 30 years honing a craft so that they can become massive successes in their fifties. Or, or do I think, yeah, we need something to bang today. We need a, we need a hit today. And I think it's probably, yo, we need the Donnie's of the world. You know what I mean? Like, it, so, um, so, uh, Randall Haney said, uh, he blames Disney. That's, that's his assessment. <laughs> um, well, it's a good question, uh, Randall. I, 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 it's funny. I am not looking for a job. Uh, I have several, um, but I don't mind alienating myself from Marvel. Um, DC, I'm reading old Legends of the Dark uh, Night books, uh, like the the long series. Uh, I'm trying trying to work my way through it now. I I find real merit in how DC can still allow. DC does a good a better job in my view in the current. I mean that series is old, but in the current moment even of curating uh, interesting books, right? Uh, that 
uh, allow creators to go places with their characters. So I'm not as quick to criticize DC, uh, even though I have criticisms, of course. Marvel, I don't mind alienating myself from. I don't understand their comic book line in 2023. I don't understand their goals. Uh, 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 I don't understand what their end game is with their properties. I know people have theories about, you know, this is just R&D. This is like they don't care about the books. I, maybe, maybe not. I don't, I'm not in those offices. I'm just going to say I don't understand them. So, uh, yeah, I can uh, – let's blame the largest entertainment – uh, company on the planet, Disney. I'm I'm at peace with that, um, but I don't think it tells the whole story, right? Because certainly there's things under Disney that are good. Uh, I'm sure that we could find things of merit under uh, that that Disney has their hand in because they have their hand in probably ten thousand properties and and you know uh, however many products per year. So I I I'm fine to blame Disney in in this sort of macro like uh, flattening of the culture. Um, mono, you you could argue global monoculture sort of sort of way, but I don't think it it doesn't tell me exactly why the books aren't hitting, you know. So it it, it doesn't do enough for me in 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 that respect. Because um, they won Marvel for a while, and like uh, Marvel now was really good. Point now was pretty good. Um, all new, all different had some really bangers. You know what I mean? Like there was some good stuff coming out, like during the Disney years of Marvel, it's just kind of yeah. hit this point where it's just at this really stagnant state. And it's just kind of recently too. It's only the past maybe two years, I'd say. Well, so that's, what's interesting, right? Is the, uh, the Alonzo, uh, uh, tenure, the Axel Alonzo tenure was, uh, marked by, uh, some really good, really the first half i think you could argue had some excellent books uh and then towards the end of his time at the company i don't know if there was greater managerial oversight or or, or what might have happened but he seemed to lose the reins um and look i don't no disrespect to that man but i don't work for him so i'm just gonna be honest it it, it became unclear uh because this is an unfortunate thing. Tom Brevert has to deal with this all the time, and I and I sympathize with him. When you are the point man for a company, you become the hatchet man for a company. And, and what I mean by that is you're out front, <clears throat> and you have to be in lockstep or you're not going to have that job. And it requires you to do things for your shogun that you would not normally do. So Tom Brevort famously just straight up lied to fans about uh, uh, the X-Men, right? Just lied. And everybody gave him a pass because they see him as a company man that has to do company shit, right? That just has to like go out there and say the thing that you're supposed to say for the company. And nobody believes a word that comes out of your mouth because they know that you're speaking on behalf of the company. And the company's, the company's will is just uh, changing all the time. Um. So uh, Alonzo, uh, Axel Alonzo was tough because he seemed to be a person with strong curation skills and good taste. And then towards the end, he started owning all of these terrible, terrible decisions and would stand on them. But you never know what's real when you, a man's job is to live and die with, uh, with the company. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? You, you, you can't know what, like CB Sobolski. There's a lot of criticism on CB Sobolski's tenure right now as, as uh, Marvel letter in chief. Um, maybe it's all merited. Maybe it's all, but it's also possible that this man is being crushed from above, you, you, you know? And, and it's, it's just, it's, so I try to give grace to all of these fellas who, who uh, are in these kind of unwinnable positions, you know? Like, look, uh, uh, both of you fellas got families. Yeah. So if somebody offered you $280,000 to, to, to say something on behalf of a company and just eat shit occasionally, just you got to eat the shit, would you do it? You, if you got kids, you got to do it, right? And, and, and it is what it is. 
So I don't. If I, you I'm got not, bills, you got to do it. <laughs> right. So, 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 so I'm not mad at. I'm not really like mad at these people. You know, like I like. I think that that's the thing that gets lost in a lot of these conversations. Is I see a lot of conversations online where people have this real uh, vitriol for for uh, you know like uh, whether it's Sabolski or or whoever Didio when he was around, and now Jim Lee is the target, and and. Uh, I feel the I feel the disappointment. I feel the anger, and I feel like the I mean, for me particularly, because I, I'm not even if I could do without any of their individual products, I need them to be successful. So, so I, I'm with all that, but I don't I don't think making it personal is ever very helpful with this because I don't know what those fellas are under. You know what I mean? Like I like yeah. I, I got I got no idea, and uh, I don't know. It, it, to to me. Unfortunately, I think, uh, you know, and we'll see, I, I'm, I'm certainly not a creature of corporations, so I don't, I, 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 you know, this is just talking to people. Um, I think it changes, uh, in a bad way. Um, I think it changes in a way that is going to be like unpleasant for everybody. And, uh, on the other side of it will be good, I think, but like right now, uh, David Zaslov, uh, is being hammered by the WGA because he's uh getting two hundred thousand dollars or two hundred million dollars rather um as a salary uh and unwilling to pay writers what writers believe that they're worth um but there's other people quietly who think that zaslav is is doing a necessary pruning of on of shows and and properties that are not working and that he is a villain and you're paying him that amount of money in part. Yeah. In part to be the villain. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I think it's possible that Marvel and DC are going to get villains. And I think that those villains are going to, to, to gut, uh, things. And I I mean, look, let me be fair to the editors at, at both companies. I think they know that's going to happen. And I think that there's a lot of stress to keeping your resume shiny for what you presume is going to be a short tenure in, in, in an editorial position. I mean, freelancers, freelancers take jobs with the understanding that it's going to be short term. I'm going to be fired, right? I have a friend who makes a lot of money and he makes a lot of money because he knows he's going to be fired several times a year from clients. It's part of the gig. It's just, and uh, you can't be delicate about it, et cetera. But that's not how most people want to live. And if you're an editorial, which is in some ways, you know, like a, like a, a specialty executive uh, sort of space, um, it sucks to have to think about the fact that, a Zaslov is going to come in and cut your throat at some point because somebody's going to look at the, 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 the actual math and you probably feel goddamn powerless to do anything because you're responsible for five books. You've been told who, who, uh, the editor in chief wants on, on those books. Uh, you're essentially a steward, uh, and the talent isn't there. What are you supposed to do? <laughs> you know what I mean? What are you supposed to do except for look at your resume and go, oh God. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So uh it's it's a really unworkable situation at this exact moment. Uh sorry if I've bummed everybody in, in, in the viewership <laughs> out here, but 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 uh I just I, I'm just uh I am critical of Marvel and DC, but it, it it's really from a I want them to win position. It's not it's not I want them to crumble into the sea i don't want them to exist anymore I, that's not how i feel about things i would do you know how much i would love a good punisher book yeah. i would love i would love a good punisher book it would bring me a lot of joy but i, I so i want marvel dc do it you know what i mean be the most successful but but uh did you read the greg rucka run from a couple years ago so the rucka run was the tell me if i'm wrong the, Ru, the rucka one the rucka run was the one that uh uh, kind of uh, made him the uh, made him the Jason Voorhees 
uh, made the Punisher kind of the, the not the central figure of the book, but but the uh, unstoppable force that surrounds the the characters that we've put in the in, in the lead role. Is that, kind is that of, right? but he also kind of trains like a new Punisher, like a. Oh yeah, uh, listen, I, I'm I'm going to be honest. This is where I'm going to uh, betray a lot of. Um, a, a, a lot of uh, kind of sensibility, old man sensibility. <clears throat> I, I, my favorite run of the last 10 years was the Mark Wade, um, Mark Wade daredevil. Right. And uh, the, the reason for that artist escapes me off the top. He's very good. Um, but the reason that I loved that run was because there was, you know, Foggy has like a heart attack, whatever. But like the, 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 it wasn't about changing the status quo. It was about telling the best possible Daredevil stories imaginable. And I, I don't want any status quo change, not because I'm dusty and I, I fear change, but because I think that we've put too much of an emphasis on keeping this long form narrative story going that is requires soap opera like ridiculousness right so like soap operas because they they're interpersonal dramas that rely on on uh big reveals and changes they always have to have somebody's stepbrother is actually their son you know what i mean some nonsense right like so, 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 some bullshit where it's uh you know my twin was the one that killed esmeralda right that sort of thing and it has to by nature become more and more ridiculous. It becomes like the fast, the fast and furious movies. And I think that that's where we are with, with Marvel and DC is, Oh, like, for example, whenever, whenever you get some nonsense where it's like, this is, you know, Dr. Strange is now, uh, the Iron Man. I just, I tip over my, my desk and I say, all right, get me the F out of here because this is not, this is not, uh, it's not interesting. It's not like uh, uh, just a real story. So, uh, everybody's uh, in this, in the chat, uh, our, uh, rest in peace to Ray uh, Stevenson. I, I don't know this fellow's acting and I only just saw a clip of Punisher war zone, but, uh, I am now going to watch it because, uh, the clip it's was the uh, best yeah, movie I'm, in my opinion. Like, so I'm going to, okay. It's funny that I have this thing where I go, I don't want any changes in these characters. I just, I want to read just great stories starring these characters. And then when somebody hits me with a take that I love, I make an exception because Garth Ennis, Garth Ennis is uh, Ennis and Dylan's Punisher was not the Punisher that preceded it. It's the best Punisher that, that there's ever been or ever will be. Mm -hmm. a a and, uh, Every other take on the Punisher is pathetic, uh, to me almost tragic, uh, uh, effort at capturing some of the excitement that, that in my opinion, uh, Annis and Dylan arrived at by just incredibly high craft. Um, so, so uh, when I watch things like, I have friends that love the, the Dolph Lundgren Punisher movie. Oh, it's great. Uh, yeah, I thought all the Punishers have been pretty fun adaptations in their own right. You know what I mean? The films, see, in my opinion. Well, I'm, I'm as one a of those... kid, you're so excited, right? When you heard that was coming out, like it yeah, was but... the highlight of. Well, and it is written kind of like a bad '90s uh, comic book. That it's like the mafia kid that can do magic and stuff like that. I mean, it kind of read like something Chuck so, Dixon would have written. You know, like. Is it, so that that's the thing, though, right? Is um, the 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 Punisher is it's John wick in the respect that John wick, the Punisher, uh, less so the death wish movie, uh, and dirty Harry movies that kind of inspired everything. But like, uh, the Punisher is a cipher in so many ways. You can just make him almost anything. It's a cool costume. As long as he's killing villains, uh, you, you can almost, uh, yeah, it was, it was Sam Neon daredevil. You're uh, thank you, James. Uh, it was really superior work that was in the chat. Everybody is Mark Wade and, and uh, Samney. Uh, so the, the uh, uh, I forget where I was. The, 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 the uh, basically I am fearful of any Punisher uh, adaptation because it's one of those characters where I feel like they touch absolute perfection 
in a in a in a in a run. They they touch something that was uh, above and beyond. Now, do uh, you know the Ennis run? Uh, uh, obviously, R.I.P. to Dylan and all that. But like the the uh, the, the Goran Par uh, Par Love material, uh, I actually like the best because I like his art the best. But uh, but but Ennis just had that character fully dialed into something that I thought was. I don't. I almost don't want to see other takes. You know what I mean? And I, and and this is coming in from a guy who it's not like that was what I grew up on. I didn't. I grew I grew up on uh, the Mike Barron Punisher, uh, a different a different beast. But I felt like they arrived at something that was absolute perfection uh, with Ennis. So uh, Warzone I avoided because I thought it would be like some like it looked like it, to my eye it looked like like they made the Punisher into the Crow or something. You know, like, like like where it was that highly stylized, almost like uh, miniature model work for everything. It has um, that look to it, but like it's written very Enos esque. Like it, like he took a lot from actually the Kitchen Irish story arc from the. Yeah, Mac okay. Arc. Like he kind of plays the gangs against each other like that. He like the punishers like really smart like that. He doesn't like he actually like gets the people to work against each other for him and stuff. It, 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 it's all right for like a trash film. I'm not going to lie. It's a trash movie, but like, it's pretty cool. Cause it's like a Marvel trash film. You know what I mean? So I, I, uh, I, it is in my queue now. <laughs> I, I am going to watch uh, Punisher war zone. Um, the Thomas Jane one, I was out from, uh, fr from jump because it was in Miami or something. And I was like, what the, what the hell are we talking about here? <laughs> um, but uh Sorry, gentlemen. I've taken us in a lot of different directions. Uh, <laughs> that's all right, man. Yeah, that's why you're on the show, man. We want to we want to know this stuff, or you know, like take this journey with you. I mean, like it's been a very interesting talk. Like we've gone all kinds of places, and yeah, it's. Uh, I know you. You know what I mean? I I think well, it's well, nice it, to it's nice to hear, like you said before, that you're continuing with the Frontiersmen, that whole universe with so, image. So, so I, was, I was happy to hear that earlier when you said that. I was like, because well, I really enjoyed that universe. So, so, yeah. so that was a great disappointment because uh, uh, Marco had health, and then uh, he had health concerns, and this was uh, Italy's essentially second wave of uh, COVID burn through. Um, uh, so Marco had some health issues. We haven't gotten really specific on this, but Marco Marco had some health issues, and then. Uh, his grandmother who he uh lived in a home with uh passed away and he was responsible for uh sorting out her affairs and uh it was just uh so, so antioch w was uh derailed uh at that time um issue three has been done for a while and and uh, uh issue four uh, uh, james is in the chat right now james is uh going to be uh editing issue four shortly but the uh but uh, when we're when we get that out to market as a trade, uh, we're going to make a, a kind of a big announcement. That I, uh, if you enjoyed that, then I, I'm. I, what 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 comes next is going to be quite exciting. Um, if, if you gentlemen wouldn't mind, I'm going to uh, use a captured bolt uh, rifle on my dog and uh, kill him. <laughs> g g g g g g give me one moment, uh, and I would love to talk about whatever else we got. Yes, sir. Perfect. Go on. There we go. I thought the trade for Antioch was already supposed to be. Oh, it's scheduled for September. Okay. Okay. That's cool. Yeah, it should be releasing in September, the Antioch. Uh, so that's good that it's not dropped. I was not happy. A lot of output for him this year, you know what I mean? That's... Yeah. Yeah. And the other book uh, that we were mentioning before we went off on a, on a tangent was the. Uh, uh, don't avert your eyes, which is coming out June thirty first. So he has uh, three books on release in June. So you could go get Don't Avert Your Eyes on June thirty first. Drops in comic shops. And I highly recommend it. Like if you're a fan of There's Nothing There, this is a great little tide over for the next arc. It really sets it up, and um, the little shorts in it are, are all very funny. My my favorite is the second one about the campers. And the situation that they end up at the end, oh man, I giggled. Like I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> you watching so, me? You watching me? <laughs> you watching watch me? me? <laughs> Who are you watching? You watching me? <laughs> I, I'm I'm glad you enjoyed that because I I I, uh, 
you know, it's, it's a funny thing. I, I, uh, I'm not so pretentious that I sit around thinking of myself as, as an artist or something, but, but I, I was really surprised, you know, uh, uh, at how, how doing adult books just puts you off of the radar of so many publishers. Uh, it, it really kind of uh, negates big aspects of your career. And, you know, again, I, I'm, I'm really at peace with that. Like I love what I've, uh, what I've done and I'm going to continue to do it. So it, it uh, kind of, how would I put this? There's a, a lot of people in comics are not doing as much as they would like to, and they're not trying as many things as they would like to, because there's a t tacit understanding that if, if you put out certain types of work, you're not going to ever get that phone call. And I do not care about that phone call that much. <laughs> so, so I'm able to do some things that uh, maybe other people aren't, um, or aren't willing to yet. I'm sure that, you know, hopefully. Well, the good changes. thing is like sexuality is kind of getting more accepted in Western comics. We've had kind of a little bit of a, a European renaissance with some of the stuff images put out, some of the stuff yeah. games put yeah. out. Um, um, yeah. So like the, it's getting a little more um, welcome in, in Western comics kind of, which yeah, I, 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 mean, I agree. I, you know, I, I call it like a me, a bit of a me too hangover in the respect that uh, there was a cultural moment and then, uh, people kind of didn't know what the, they, they didn't know what was going to open up for, for criticism for a while, you know, like what, what kind of depictions are safe? What kind of, what kind of things are comfortable? Like, you know, like a lot uh, of this is being spearheaded by females though, which I think is wonderful. You got like Maria, like with exactly the sludge right. hammer up in front and um, you got Merck and Dolpha. And that's right. Like that. No, you're, you're absolutely right about that. And, but that's, that's also kind of part of the concern is that, a, a lot of male creators kind of were scared because they 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 basically just didn't want to offend for life. And you know, we can talk endlessly about yeah. whether whether that's an appropriate response to a to a, a, a you know like a, a moment you know or a movement. Like it may, maybe that is the appropriate response. Somebody could say that, or maybe you should always seek to offend as a creator, and or maybe you should always at least be willing to. These are all conversations, but 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 the it, it was just true enough that there was a lot of creators that kind of didn't know what they didn't know what the line was. And if something was going to upset people, like, you know, look, even uh leaded gasoline, which is again, true story. It just so happens that a lot of the people that were murdered uh, were women and they were also a lot of them, women of color. And that's a, that's a lot to, it's a lot to parse. If you are, um, kind of a well-intentioned, uh, not trying to offend anybody, uh, not trying to harm anybody, certainly. Uh, it, it, and you just want to tell a story, but you also have to ground it. I mean, you know, it, it, people were in these weird positions for a, a long time and still are, some of them more so than others. But uh, <clears throat> with Don't Avert Your Eyes, uh, you know, just decided, Maria, you're right. Maria certainly is, is not, she's not blushing. You know what I mean? Like her, her work is not afraid of itself. And, mm -hmm. and she is, uh, so her involvement uh, as my co-creator is just, uh, it, it kind of in whatever respect, uh, maybe, maybe gives us that force field that, that you would want because uh, she is, but you guys look, keep it, it's playful. <laughs> it, 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 the sexuality yeah. in the book, like it, it's not threatening. <laughs> I wouldn't say, you know what I mean? It's not, it's definitely crude, but like, I mean, it, to American standards, I mean, in Europe, like it's a comic book and a story. No, I, I, <laughs> I, I'm glad you said that. I, I agree that that it is playful enough that I don't think that there's, certainly I hope nobody would divine any malice from it. And and uh, uh, I hope that, that that buys us goodwill with the readers. Of course, there's going to be readers that, that are offended. That's just natural and that's how it goes. But um the the I, I don't know i'm i'm uh i i loved cherry cherry pop tart when when i was a kid like and that was an explicitly adult book that was if you look at it through the lens of 2023 of course it's, it's of course some of it's not going to stand up but uh some of it however was uh just kind of good-natured um 
post post sixties uh, uh, sort of free love sexuality sort of uh, milieu, and it was fun and it was a turn on for me when I discovered it in adolescence and just uh, these cartoon images of sex was so provocative to me and and really made a huge impact. So, uh, you know, I don't see why, you know, I'm a, I'm like a healthy minded person. I'm in a relationship with a good woman. I, I don't, I think it's always, um, possible to say that, that something could have a negative impact and, you know, we should be fearful of it, but I just don't know if comic book sex is one of those things. <laughs> I mean, it's, so, uh, we took a chance with it. There's some sex in the book. Uh, the, 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 the next series will, uh, it, it won't be, there's some silly ones obviously in, 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 in don't avert your eyes. And, and, uh, uh, I don't think we'll, we'll hit that same tone on the, on the next series, which I think is going to be probably like a little grimmer, uh, then, uh, there's nothing there. Uh, but, um, yeah, I, I'm I'm having a real blast writing that stuff. It, it, it's uh, it's it's very freeing to not have to worry about, um, you know, will the publisher run this? Although I should I should I should talk about this. Um, we're in a really weird period that nobody's talking about. Uh, perhaps it's way too industry and and readers don't get access to this. We went through multiple printers. Uh, to print that book because that's why black mask has kind of been missing in the comic scene for a little while i noticed that there i thought that they were actually in trouble but then i saw pizzolo started putting out his new book the sequel to cal exit um so so uh pizzolo so here's a here's a i don't know if they'd appreciate me saying this or not uh black mask is never in trouble because black mask is essentially a, a three-person operation and this is and that's very different than um I'm not suggesting for a second that Boom is in trouble. I, you know, IDW's troubles are, are, are well documented. But it, 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 it doesn't. I'm just saying that those are companies with many employees, and when you have that type of overhead, it, it requires you to borrow, um, and uh, whether that's in terms of actual loans, but more likely investors, right? And uh, Black Mask doesn't have to do that because. It puts out a limited slate of books with a very small uh, uh, staff. <clears throat> so, no, Black Mask is not uh, they're not in trouble. Not to get into anybody's business, but Pizzola had a long surgery, whatever. But 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 uh, but but the uh, uh, it was also the case that he wanted to clean house a little bit because uh, there was a couple projects that were outstanding. And now I'm really into somebody else's business, but there was a couple projects that were outstanding that it was kind of time to either pay those through and, and, and be done with them or to find a way to finish them up, et cetera. And, uh, he made it the priority to get everybody paid, even if they did not finish their obligations and, uh, move on to books in good standing, because I'm sure you're aware of this. If you're a small publisher, the thing that tanks you is, is public sentiment. Uh, and there's a couple fellas who, have done themselves wrong by, uh, by not paying on time. And then it, when it compounds, it becomes a real problem because the sentiment shifts on you, the kind of fan base that you relied on for, for your small thing that you're doing, your, your niche books. It doesn't matter, frankly, if people turn on Marvel or DC, there's, there's going to be these people that their pull list is every single book that, that, the, that is put out every month and you can rely on the whales uh small publishers can't do that so 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 you have to parlay with your with with your uh audience in some way you have to you have to even if i think that that's kind of anti-art i i when you're a small publisher you've got to interface with your with the people that buy your books and and you gotta at some level you gotta service them so and, and beyond the product um, so, uh, Pizzolo got his, made sure that the business was right. It got everybody paid. 
and uh, moved on to the next books. This corresponded with also, I was telling people for like two years that he was getting ass surgery and I misheard him. He was getting eye surgery. So he's like, you, did you tell me, he's like, did you tell people for two years that I was, he's like, why are people asking me about my ass? And I said, I, said, I thought you get an ass surgery. He said, no, I, my eye fell out. Um, but at any rate, uh, uh, yeah, but Black Mask had to go through multiple printers because multiple printers refused to, to print the book. And uh, essentially, again, this doesn't get spoken about, but uh, one of the big publishers uh, had the same problem um, with one of their books. And this is becoming more common. There's essentially, uh, it's a very 80s impulse uh, to basically put some type of bizarre morality clause into your, in, into your uh, printing uh, of these books. Uh, it it was a hassle. <laughs> it was a hassle. They wouldn't print it because of the subject matter. Yeah, they wouldn't print it because of the content. Uh, oh, uh, it went through multiple printers to do that. Um, very frustrating. Uh, and uh, yeah, the, 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 uh, you know, with no wonder you have manga among the companies putting it out. Oh wait, that's the other book. My bad. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the uh, it, it is increasingly a problem that um printers okay so 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 we were in a weird economic moment sorry i won't walk everybody through supply chain stuff but we were in a weird economic moment uh, where uh a lot of publishers switched printers uh and were desperate to find printers that that could get the work done and uh some you know uh, paper qualities changed but there's a lot going on and uh somewhere in there uh some of these printers uh, uh took it upon themselves to set new terms and some of those terms are we're not going to print uh content that uh we deem uh, offensive or or whatever it is you know like i said a very 80s a very 1980s impulse here um <clears throat> but uh anyway that, that that's uh, uh, uh you should have pozzolo on he could definitely talk to you about that uh oh, that would be fun. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually a huge fan of his i've um collected god killer since it was an animated thing i got the oh DVD. that's cool that's cool yeah god killer has been uh you know, it's funny. Uh, Pozzolo doesn't get the credit because he's seen as simply a publisher, and, and and he doesn't even really. You know, he he he's a writer, but he's not an egoist about it. He's he's not. He just does what he does, right? And uh, he, uh, Godkiller has, at times, been a very helpful vanguard for getting edgier content out. Uh, it, it it's at times been, you know. Uh, at least in the heavy, at least on the heavy metal magazine level of, of nudity or, or, or potential offense. And, and uh, uh, he's, he's just been doing it to a, to an audience that appreciates it every time. So, so, so uh, I, I give him a lot of respect, even if I, uh, I tell him I don't read any of his books, but I, I, uh, <laughs> I, I, I you know, I, I respect that, that uh, by virtue, because here's the thing, if you come out and say, I'm going to do the most offensive thing I can. Look at these. Look, look, look at here's a, here's a penis. Uh, you, you kind of, um, you open yourself up to a type of criticism that's not necessary. Whereas if you just conduct yourself like a professional or an artist, uh, you can be a little edgier and people don't believe that you're, that you want to be that conversation with them. And, and what I mean by that is, um, there are whole conversations in comics that nobody tries to drag me into. And it's cause they know, I hope maybe it's cause I'm irrelevant, but I hope that it's because they know I'm a goddamn adult and I'm, I don't have the time <laughs> for this nonsense. So, so, um, you know, there's like a weird, um, sort of, you know, like a, like a Twitter dunking on culture in comics that is just such it, like, I wish, I'm sorry, this is going to get me in trouble, but let me just go off. I, I wish that the people that are doing all the sniping at each other and dunking on each other and all that shit online could see how the people that they respect view them. 
you know, like I, I, I just wish that any of them could be in these conversations with people that we all think of as, as, as important and, and serious creators and ha- the lens that they see that bullshit through. It's not, it's not approving. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not. So, uh, and that doesn't mean you got to live for your idols. You know what I mean? If, if you really, really got to call Mark way to bitch, you know, like if that's, if that's your soul is compelling you to, to do that, I guess, I guess do it. But it's, it's this thing that's going on in comics, this, uh, w- whatever it is. I, I, I don't, it's not just not, it's not aesthetic. It has no aesthetic value. It's not talking about the things that make uh, what we do special in any way. And and, uh, that's frustrating. (laughs) It's an irritating phenomenon. Mark Wade has my um, fealty for life because of Incorruptible, man. Like, I I legitimately loved that book when it was coming out. So, like, and he's done a lot of books I've really loved. I mean, he's been around forever. He wrote Cap when I was a kid, and I was a big Captain America fan. So, yeah, he read it through most of my youth. So. it, it's him and I, I would argue that Wade and, and uh, Busiek are, are, are the uh, are the two kind of um, uh, the, the real the, the real crafts people uh, at Big Two Comics. It's not to say that there's not other great writers. There's 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 good writers, but uh, th- those two fellows are the actual goddamn scientists of the of the medium uh, of superheroes, I should say, of the genre. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, there's one other thing I wanted to ask you about was your uh, 12 part story that was in the Marvel 30th anniversary anthology series. Mm-hmm. Uh, what is that part of the front Frontiersman universe that you're it doing is, over yeah. at Image? Okay, it is. that's what I thought because the the lawyer character he makes a brief appearance, right? He does, yeah. And then your other, um, yeah, that's what I, I caught. That I was like, oh, I'm pretty sure it's in the same. And those, ah. Oh, that's you got another fantastic artist on this too, man. Uh, uh, listen, Maurizio, how do you pronounce his last name? Uh, it, it, he's it, uh, he's a thing that I I was not aware existed. He is a uh, Italian. I mean, obviously they exist, but I never met one in my life. He's a Jewish Italian, so that's okay. Maurizio, that's Maurizio Rosen Rosenzweig. Okay, that's why <laughs> I was I was thrown off by the name too. I was like, okay, I'm not sure. Uh, Okay, fantastic work. I, I love that. The black and white. It uh, gave off like a little bit like uh, caliber, like maybe some old school caliber press kind of yep, vibes sure. to it. And uh, I was really digging it. I, I, I think I've read up to the first 10. I, I have to read the last two parts. Uh, so, and so, really good stuff. Yeah. Maurizio, another name I should have put up, up front because we're working on something. Uh, such a capable artist and not just not just a capable artist but uh because look there's so many different compliments you can give an artist and uh capable is not the is not is is not the one that they would necessarily want to hear right because it's the baseline so like let's say such a capable artist and such a stylist like Uh his his propensity to make every page as thrilling as he can exactly and, yes and as fun as you can so like for example uh Maurizio is actually the positive uh opposite of what i was saying earlier where there's uh writers artists and then there's artist artists and Maurizio is an artist artist uh Maurizio if you give him a page of two people talking he will insert a lizard on a leash in the background because and he, and he, yeah. And he gave you a lot of nice little plugs in there too. I saw a drug yes, tr- yeah, graffiti did, yeah, on did, the did, walls did. a little bit everywhere. <laughs> he, 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 he's, he's a big music guy. He's a big music guy, but he, yeah. he uh, <laughs> uh, he's fantastic. Just like a, like a creative powerhouse because he, every page has to have something. It has to have a hook. It cannot be two people talking in his world. It can't be. And, and, and honestly, this is why I think Maurizio's uh, an actual genius is because that applies to not just the things that you could, um, uh, well, okay. Here's the example I always use. Uh, uh, 
A hundred bullets was who? Uh, Azarello, Rizzo, and Azzarello Rizzo. And Rizzo. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, uh, Eduardo Rizzo, is that right? Eduardo, yeah. Yeah. My yeah. Favorite yeah. Artist exactly. in the world. yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Rizzo is uh, beyond a talent, and and here's why. There, there, there's a there's a page. Um, it, it's in one of the hundred bullets uh, collections. Uh, a script is included in the back. And this is where you get to see the brilliance of Rizzo. And, and it is a conversation between two people. That's it. That's all Azarello describes. It's in, it's in, it's on the corner of a park and it's a conversation between two people. Rizzo draws a hot dog vendor in the back, dropping a hot dog, a pigeon taking the hot dog. So, you, you know what I mean? There's something happening. The world is alive at all times. And that's what Maurizio does that is so brilliant. It, it, it is uh, your characters talking is not the whole of the planet. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and uh, uh, I think that that's – Maurizio is a, is a real joy to work with in that respect because – and I mean this I mean this as the highest compliment. You do not know what you're getting in, in the page. You, you know what I mean? Like it, it, it is uh, something is going to be completely uh, of his own creation. And that, that this is why, like when we talk about writers as artists or pardon me, artists as writers, uh, that's the sort of stuff that doesn't, that, that's why they often, that's why artists will often try to explain this to people is that, Hey, I'm, I'm not the cinematographer. I, I am the director. You know what I mean? And, 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 and they're not wrong. Like if there's any comparison to film, which is a sl- obviously a very sloppy analog, but if, if you were to do a comparison, I mean, it is, it's not just what I write. It's everything else. It's the textures of the walls that tell the story. And Maurizio does that uh, with, with real, real gusto um that the, so he and i are working on another book uh w- w- which uh is kind of oh well let me give you a let me give you a quick Maurizio story there's two police officers that that are uh play a incredibly minor role in the story that that Gehenna story in the, in the image anthology they're in a total of maybe six six pages or whatever they don't even have names and i describe them as officer one officer two uh, Maurizio draws them both as attractive women police officers. <laughs> you know why? Yes, yes. Because, okay, I know what you're talking. I know which scenes you're talking about now. Yeah. And the reason he does that is because that's what brings him joy to draw, and he yeah. knows that there's no harm in making them women. I, I, it was my assumption that they were men, because I, I, I didn't even specify. Be, because I was just operating, it becomes axiomatic, normalized to just, to, to just, uh, oh yeah, the male cop, he's probably going to have a shaved head. Uh, it will, one guy will be overweight, whatever. That's not how Maurizio sees the world. Maurizio's world is much more beautiful than mine. You know? <laughs> so, so, so uh, it but really, I, really I, impressive. I love this world you're building. Like, I think Thank it comes full we'll circle to what you were saying before about the big two. This is you taking everything. I think that you grew up on from the big two and, and it's almost a love letter to all the stuff you love that the big two put out. Like you, you get a lot of little hints here and there of like, okay, I could see like the Punisher here or, you know, like maybe Captain America there. And you're just taking these little bits and parts that you love from your childhood. And now you're putting it into this like kind of superhero world and putting your own flavor on it. And I love it. It's a fun, it's a fun read. It's a fun book. And I think, uh, People should uh, should go check it out because, you know, not unlike uh, like like Jeff Lemire did kind of the same thing, you know, mm-hmm. with uh, Black Hammer. He yeah, created yeah. his own world that was totally inspired by all the big two comics he read as he was growing up. And I feel you got this same vibe going on with with your book here. With the what 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 do you call this universe anyway? Your Frontiersman universe. It's, do you so, have a name for it? Or no? Okay. So, so so let me tell you the biggest struggle here is. Marketing this is nearly impossible because uh, uh, Antioch continued the Frontiersman story, and I I made that clear in uh, uh, solicits. And after it went to solicit, people in comics called me and said, "What have you done? Why did you do that?" And I said, "What do you mean?" And they said, 
now those stores are going to order like it's Frontiersman issue eight, not like it's uh, okay, not so not like that. it's the first issue. And what has proven really hard and what we're trying to dial in is how to interact with retailers and how to uh, make retailers excited about kind of, yeah, Black Hammer would be a great example. Black Hammer, you know, Black Hammer occupies the same strange space that uh, Hellboy does in that it can do uh, uh, self-contained minis, right? That, mm, that, yeah. uh, that, that build. And uh, that's in 2023, that might be the most that creators can hope for because long runs are, are uh, we're not going to see them again for some time. I don't think. And, uh, but trying to get retailers, trying to get retailers excited in that way about that format is, is, uh, the challenge right now. So uh, when I, if, if you're a retailer watching this, uh, email me, I'm going to be in 30 different cities in the next 30 days. Uh, <laughs> and it's, it's not intentionally a comic book, uh, goodwill tour, but I'm going to hit as many stores as I can. I just want to get the pulse. I just want to see like how I can best service the retailers in, in trying to get them to pick up these books, <clears throat> you know? Nice. Yeah. Uh, I, I've been really enjoying it. I can't wait to read the last two little, uh, little, uh, what is it? It's about six, six to eight pages per eight, 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 eight a piece. I think it, it, it was, piece, uh, yeah. I, I, it's funny. I, I, I love V for Vendetta, but n not necessarily for the reasons everybody else does. I, 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 uh, when, when I reread it last year, no, two years ago, I, uh, it was the first time in maybe a decade that I reread it. And the format struck me because obviously now I work in comics and I'm, I'm got more of an eye the format. So we look at V for Vendetta as this collected work because that's how basically everybody in the U S received it, but it was serialized as eight pages for a long time yeah, and, and magazine, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. And, uh, it was, uh, you know, for us, that's rare, right? Like uh, how many times have we seen that? Even the books like, um, like, uh, what probably Marvel premiere, right? Like, like, like even, um, I'm trying to think of what books, uh, uh you have did to read this heavy thing. metal to get anything like that in the U S kind of, but, but even heavy metal is very frustrating because heavy metal, uh, we'll do whole graphic novels in one issue. So yeah, it, it, it and sometimes they do the thing where you, you're getting um, maybe you'll get a twelve parter, you know, but 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 uh, but you're not getting you're not getting uh, like a thick OGN's worth uh, of uh, continuous story. And, and I, I wish that we could find ways to do this. Um, I I hope that uh, that the image anthology. Uh, you know, look, anthologies are tough. Dark Horse Presents, uh, in various iterations, had one of the best anthologies on the, on the racks, and they they basically couldn't keep it going. You know, like, it, and, and that's not any failure on their part. It's just that anthologies, Americans, Americans struggle with anthologies. Uh, you see that there, people will say, well, what about Kickstarter? They're very successful there, and it's like, yeah, the, it, it, there's a number of reasons for that, but but the most part is you build a community where you for la if, listen, this is disrespectful as hell. I don't mean it this way. If you have 30 people acting as advertisers for your book to their, to 10 friends, um, to pick up their work in your anthology, then, uh, on, on a platform like Kickstarter, where if you could get 500 people to buy something, uh, th th then you could be, it's a success, right? It's a success. So it's, it's very different than doing a mass market anthology where you have to, <clears throat> you have, to keep everybody in that book paid, you'd have to uh, rope 20,000 an issue. You know what I mean? So, so it's, uh, it's tough. They're very tough, but, 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 uh, uh, yeah, it, it, yeah. It, it's, I was grateful that we got the opportunity shout out to image for, for making it possible. Yeah, there's a lot of great fun stories in there. So anyone that's read Image for years, uh, there's a lot of little one shots too in it, like these short little one shots that really bring to yeah, throw to yeah, like the pro. They have a little story in there where 
Uh, who was the yeah. writer? Was it Ennis and um, Paul no, Miotti, right? It was Paul Miotti, yeah. And uh, yeah. Uh, what's her? Uh, the the original artist came back to to draw it. I don't have the issue here, but Connor. Yeah, Amanda Connor. Amanda Connor. Yeah, she she draws it. Yeah. So man, there's there's a lot of great little stories in there. So yeah, I recommend people go pick it up. It, it's it's a fun read. Mm. That's cool. I, 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 it was, it was just, I didn't know if I'd ever get an opportunity to do that format in the U S and I'm very grateful. And it's a nice book. It's well put together a nice thick cover. Yeah, uh, it's true. Good presentation, quality paper. I mean, yeah, you get your money's a little trade paperback pretty much. Yeah. It's about 50 to 60 pages somewhere in that ballpark. Yeah. Yeah. 60, I, 65 I, pages each, each issue. Yeah. And I, I wish we could get that off more uh, at, at like, uh, you know, if you remember those old Elseworlds uh, books, uh, the, the those sort of premium quality mm -hmm. Elseworlds books that DC yeah. did back in the day. I wish we could get, if we could do more 60 page, you know. Um, oh, we're big. We're big supporters of that here. We love yeah. those. Like Ultra yeah. Mega coming out the way it did. Oh, yeah. 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 Fucking loved it. Or Tough. we had uh, Nick Patera on. Max, yeah. Max Wilder John came out. What was it, Johnny? It was about a hundred pages. Yeah, it's or a, just I, uh, just under a hundred. Like the book I love itself, that. Man. The book, the actual story, I think was a little over a hundred pages, but the book was a hundred and thirty something in total with all the yeah. back matter. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, what what Nick is achieving with his uh, self publishing through crowdfunding, uh, I don't think people are. I don't think, I, and he, I, he might be a little too modest, but I I, I don't. I don't think people have really picked up where that's going to go yet. I I, I think that uh, it's it's going to be a, a bigger deal than than we currently realize. Yeah. <laughs> it's oh, just, it's, and it's fantastic. It's yeah. it's a great book. Oh, we loved it. It was. It, I mean, he's 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 one of the he's one of the real expressive craftsmen of the of the moment. You know what I mean? Like he he's uh, he he has all the chops, but there's never a moment that's not that falls outside of his style. Like it, it, it's, uh, it's it, I mean, he's a very talented person. Yeah. 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 yeah so, uh, you too. Yeah. We had yeah. him on a couple weeks ago. Yeah. We had EPHK e e too. We had on. Yeah. He, he said he was in, yeah, Nick. He, he was, was on with you about like a, maybe a secret project. Yes. Uh, it, I'm actually intimidated by, he and I are trying to plan this thing out and, I, and I'm currently intimidated by how to approach it with him because I do not want to waste a moment of that man's time. He is an Uber talent. He, he, he is. Have you, uh, have you taken a look at his, uh, <laughs> this no, one? He's, no. Is this the, but, is this new, new? Uh, this is, is the, it? from his Kickstarter. This was his last one. This yeah, is yeah, last that's the newest. No, I haven't seen yeah. this. Yeah. It's, that, I won't, I won't start on camera here, but, uh, yeah. It's pretty good, yeah. <laughs> no, no one, no one does uh, a, 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 a naked, a naked split riding a like a woman with a, a leg split riding a bomb, uh, <laughs> like <laughs> like, like, like he does. Yeah, uh, some great stuff. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, man. Like we've heard uh, him talking to you, so we got excited about that. I was like, yeah, Patrick's coming on the show in a little less than a month. He's like. Oh yeah, well then say hi for me. So he just wanted us to say hi to you for him, and uh, he said give a shout out. So that's uh, we'll, yeah, we'll he, do that for him. He he's a major talent too, and he's a guy that's not interested in playing playing the dumb sort of. Uh, no, he's got book. his way of doing things, and yeah. like yeah, he he is just happy with doing him and the way he does his stick, mm -hmm. which I got to respect him for because I love his work. Yeah. Um. Absolutely. Uh, gentlemen, I'm, I'm sorry. I just looked at the time. Um, yeah, I was going to bring it up because I know yeah. you have a plane to catch because you're going on tour. And I just saw the time, too. I was like, that's insane, man. But love having you on, man. Thanks for coming on. We really appreciate it. Uh, anytime you want to come back, you're more than welcome. I mean, we could do we could turn Patrick Kidlin into a 12, 12, <laughs> uh, 12 episode series, you know, like, uh, I yeah. mean, we didn't even we didn't even talk about like this book or oh, sure. you've yeah. got you've got you, you've built in the 10 years you've built a pretty good resume I, i'd say for for comics so yeah i mean I, 
honestly, a lot, uh, I've, I've got a lot, no hits and everything to be proud of. Is, is, <laughs> well, is I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say no I hits. I, say I think you bad, have a, man. I think you have a pretty good batting average. So Thank you. I mean, like yeah. I'd say, I definitely say at this point, you're kind of a cult creator, you know what I mean? But that's a good place to be in because your cult books are very, very satisfying. You know what I mean? And um, you're moving up. I mean, I, I really think that if people give Stringer a chance, I really think that like, I, I think a lot of people have a lot of fun with it. I thought that um, I, I giggled a lot while reading it. Like I thought that the, the characters are great. And if you're a fan of noir, like definitely pick up stringer when it comes out um july um joe yeah june june 14th june 14th stringer yeah. uh loaded gasoline is june 28th and don't avert your eyes hits shops on june 31st all three really fun reads like i can't recommend um any of them highly enough you know what i mean mm -hmm. or all of them highly enough i guess i should say it's... thank you uh, yeah, I, I appreciate your time tonight, fellas. I, I, I know that I can kind of filibuster a bit and just chat and chat. So I appreciate you letting me go off on one on occasion. Hey, no, no problem. Yeah, it was great. Great having you. Thanks again. And good luck on tour, man. Looking forward. I've got my tickets came in the mail, so I've got them right here. Yeah. He's, well, leaving. Thank you. he's leaving yeah. today. Like his first yeah. show is going to be in a couple days. He's going to be in America like rocking out for <laughs> with uh with drain yeah, uh, with yes. Bell, magnitude and combust that's right great lineup drug church is uh touring with those lots bands. of punch right. dancing going on yeah. Yeah. yes <laughs> yes <laughs> later fellas thank you for All your right. time take it easy have a good one yeah awesome man